Hey guys, what's up? Lance here. I'm live right now with Kay Banning Kellum, the author of Jeff the Killer 2015 and the sequels that spawned from it. Kay, why don't you say hi to the audience? All right, I will do my usual thing. What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Kay Banning Kellum, coming to you all the way live from my hometown of Nolens, Louisiana, to wherever you may be tonight. And God, did I miss getting to say those. How's everybody doing out there? I'm doing pretty well, and I'm currently in Virginia. <laughs> All right. Well, we got one down. Everybody else who, who tunes in, let us know where yet, as we say down here. Where yet? Y A T. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm gonna pull up the chat and see what we what we get. Yeah. Let's get some chat going here. Some chat action. Yeah. We got we got three people watching right now. Let's hope it gets bigger from here on out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Those are my. Three favorite folks so far. How do I see the chat? Is there a way for you to put that on my screen? Uh, no, I can't. You'll have to look it up on something else, like maybe a mobile device or maybe oh, okay. your computer. Gotcha, That's what gotcha. I do. All righty. Well, I, uh... Hello, everybody. Hi. All right. So, uh, Kay, tell me, how has your day been? Oh, man, my day has been fantastic. Today has been an off day from work, which is always a good day. Um, so I got zero complaints on that. How are you doing? Sir? Oh, man, you lucky bastard. I had to work today. <laughs> well, I'll be there tomorrow. I got a long day tomorrow. I got to get up early and uh, take care of stuff in the morning, and then I have to go to work in the evening. So um, we all we all pay in, in one form or another. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, what do you work as, if you don't mind me asking? Like, what do you do? Well, I, work, I work in risk management uh, in the hospitality field. Sounds a little bit like an insurance company, like in a way. Um, kind of, kind of in a way. Um, it's more about uh, insuring against um, damages to the company that you represent and such. Um, so if you're, if you ever have gone into a place and slipped and fallen and a guy comes out in a suit with a pen and a pad and starts, you know, like taking pictures of the ground and your shoes and asking you what happened and so forth and so on. You're, you're probably dealing with um, either a, uh, a loss prevention guy or a risk management guy of some sort. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as for me, I, uh, <laughs> I currently just got a part-time gig at a office max or office depot. If yeah, you know where those, those are, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, ha we have them. Yeah, I heard that some states apparently don't have them, which is weird. <laughs> it's like, you guys got your best buys? Well, we got Office Max. Well, we got both, but Office Max. <laughs> yeah, we had um, we had a Best Buy, um, or not, but, well, we have tons of Best Buys. I got two of them within, you know, like walking distance of my uh, apartment almost. But um, we had Office Max or Office Depot down here not too long ago. I'm not sure which. Let's take a look here. Dark Huntress, Dark Vampira. How are you guys doing? I like like the dark theme, Undead Gamer. That's my favorite kind of gamer. <laughs> we got Cryptic in the house. TB the Wicked Juggalo. Hello. Wicked Juggalo, how are you? All right. All righty. I'm glad we got some awesome, uh, awesome Welcome. people it's great here. To have you here. Great to have you here. It is. You guys stay <laughs> hey, around. Maybe MCP might drop by. <laughs> I'm, uh, we, I'm hoping he does. Um, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be metal. So, hey, did, did you get the word out to everybody else? I, I heard you were gonna actually. Uh, tell everyone that you knew that we were going to be streaming together. Yeah. I mean, I pushed it out there. I got some good retweets out there. And of course you can still kind of, uh, I mean, we have a, a whole evening together here. So, so folks out there in YouTube land, let your friends know, let your, you, let your mom, your dad, your cat, your dog, your frog, your log, let everybody know to get on down <laughs> here to Lance's YouTube channel. That's and, me, by uh, the way, chit chat with, um, Chit chat with us. Ask me whatever you'd like. Yeah, we'll, we'll be answering questions, but also be giving our thoughts on well anything in particular from the Slenderman film oh, and other uh, other creepy pastas like out there. That's right. Well, whatever we can think of. Or spaghetti related. We got it. Eli Thompson, <laughs> good to see you. Morgan Rainer, good to see you as well. Hope I said your name right. Rigger, maybe. R Rigger, uh, who knows? But uh, it's great to see you, Morgan. Morgan is one of my favorite Walking Dead characters. So, <laughs> I'm not really a Walking Dead guy. It's not really my thing. Well, you need to get there because it's good. So I've so, heard. So I've heard. So let's let's chat, man. What's on your mind tonight, there, creepy pasta land? <laughs> not much, actually. But 
actually, weirdly enough, I was reading some pastas earlier, and I was thinking about doing some for the channel in, in the future, and I found out that some people had already read them, which is something that kind of annoys me, because I always want to be the first person to find a pasta that is really interesting, but no one else has ever done, and that's pretty rare in my case. Right. As a matter of fact, um, there was an author uh, who requested a story that for me to read. His name is Michael Maximum, or Michael Maxim, and he sent me a story called... Um, I've never seen a child eat their pet before. Now he asked me to do it, but MCP apparently had just uploaded it today. Like he read it like before me. So that guy just beat me to the punch on it. Like, Oh man. Um, I can tell you what, like, like my friend Creeperoni, what she did is she read from a lot of, you know, lesser known authors. Um, and she got a lot of her own content out there that way i mean you kind of kind of just scour for the stories that aren't getting read you know find something on the wiki or whatever that you like you know youtube search it and if you don't see any returns for it then uh you can be the first yeah yeah but you know what they say first is the worst second is the best third is the one with the hairy hairy chest so maybe you want to be second really enough i've never heard anyone say that before <laughs> well you just heard me say it Yes, and I, I guess I'm glad that I did. <laughs> Cryptic, I agree. Obscure pastas are the way to go. Absolutely. So says <laughs> Cryptic. Yeah. Hey, uh, did, you ever, did you see that video I posted last night? I did another Mr. Dupin story. Um, no, man. Check yeah. that out, man. Now, um, you know, Mr. Yeah, Dupin. Yeah, yeah. Good, good buddy of yours. Mine, man. I, like his, I like his work. So, uh, yeah. Definitely. He has a lot of short ones, but they're really effective in my eyes. Yeah, he's a very talented writer. Is oh, yes, very, very, very. So you folks uh, out there, if you ever want to spin on over there to the old Creepypasta wiki and search user Mr. Dupin, you'll be glad that you did. A lot of talent comes from that guy. Yeah, I want, uh, I'll want. i try to get the word out to him later and let him know that I did one of his stories. So I think you'll enjoy it. I did put I some now. good sounds in there. <laughs> Might know now. Does is he watch whatever you're in? I I hope he watches this. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, we're doing this kind of late. Some people might, uh, you know, might have work in the morning. I'm going to cut him some slack on this one. We shall see. <laughs> Dark Hunters had a fudge Sunday at McDonald's. Good on. Ooh, that sounds tasty. One of my favorite. It's one of my favorite treats at the old Mickey. I actually went to a Shoney's today. We still have Shoney's down here. Yeah, I know what Shoney's is. Yeah, I I never been there though. No, oh, you're missing out, man. Shoney's is good. <laughs> oh man ah oh, damn it now i want ice cream uh, i'm lactose intolerant too so it's, it's I, I have to really want what? it i have to really want it i have to be like am i willing to uh, am i willing to sit in the hot seat for a while later on uh in order to enjoy this now and uh um, oh, yes. is it worth it is it really worth it yeah, well, usually it is um the hot fudge sunday cake thing from shoney's is always worth it so um so yeah, I have to say it is. It's your life, man. It's your life. <laughs> so with that being said, how about we uh, get into our thoughts on the Slender Man film? Slender Man, absolutely. Let's do it, man. What are your thoughts on the Slender Man film, dude? Okay, I'll say this. Um, back when I was like maybe 16, I was like really like obsessed with Slender Man. Like I was a big fan of his. And this was like back when he was like incredibly popular, right? Mm -hmm. I would talk about him a lot. I look at videos about the guy. I even looked at Marble Hornet stuff, which is really awesome. As well as, well, I never played the game. I would just watch people play the game because back in that back in those days, I didn't have a PC or a computer, so I couldn't. And I would be really interested in, well, Slender Man. And just the character in general, and I found myself being a little, a little scared of him at some points because uh, it was like, um, how do I put this? I would be like, I would like be walking like in a dark room in my house, right? And then out of nowhere, I'll be thinking about Slenderman, and I'll like imagine like he's in a dark corner, like coming up right behind me, like in a, in a dark hallway, for example, like just subconscious horror, you know? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. like you know, you know, it's not real. Like nothing can ever it's not going to like come out and jump at you. It just, just something that creeps into the back of your mind and it like freaks you out a little bit. Well, that's usually what the creepy pastas are all about, man. It's that subtle, that slow. Yeah. Burn. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And when I, I heard a Slenderman movie was going to be in productions by Hoodle Hoodlum's revenge, another favorite uh, YouTuber of mine. Like he's really awesome. And he announced that, uh, there was going to be a movie in the works and I got really excited for that. And then I find out, 
well, years later, that there's a trailer available for it. So I check it out, and it looks okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the best I can say. It looks okay. Like, years later, after Slenderman's popularity has well, well, died down, they make a movie about him, and I think it looks okay. And a well, lot of people online are, are bashing it, saying it's going to be bad, just because, well, it's too little too late. Well, that's one of the reasons. That. I mean, how can it be too little too late if it's the first, for God's sake? Oh, yeah. I mean, here's, here's my thoughts, man. I When it comes to trailers and when it comes to movies and when it comes to horror movies, here's the deal. Um, first of all, I, and I think I mentioned this to you once, I hate the fact that so many horror movies are getting a PG rating now. To me, horror movies should be rated R because yeah. they should be awesome. And uh, trying to squeeze <laughs> the requirements to get that PG rating means that you have to cut so much content in order to get them to do that. And I mean, I understand the principle behind it. A PG rating means a bigger audience can come and see it. And I get all of that, but I don't know, man, at what cost, at what cost you're losing your, you're, you're losing your artistic integrity there. So you can get more, you know, people in the chairs, I guess. Either way, I have been burnt by trailers and I have been deceived by trailers. I thought Freddy versus Jason was going to be the greatest goddamn thing in the world. I was so stoked for it and was a little disappointed by it. And I thought Pan's Labyrinth was going to absolutely suck and be boring. And I thought it was too artsy for me. And then I went and saw it and absolutely freaking loved it. So I don't, I don't go too big off of trailers. You know, we all know yeah. what Slender Man is. We know what he's all about. So we're going to see what this director and his cast can do with the concept. And they might just blow our minds. Here's to hoping. Oh, yeah, most uh, definitely. I, like, I think I it's like pretty it. ridiculous yeah. just to judge the movie based on... Oh, sorry, Kay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. What about to say? Okay. I just think it's kind of ridiculous just to judge the movie based off of its trailer. I mean, you haven't seen it yet, obviously. So how do you know if it's going to be bad? It's like... Yeah, I, a lot of films do look bad when their trailers come out because maybe it'll reveal too much of the plot or maybe it just doesn't look appealing. But I would at least give the film a chance because exactly. you never know. It could be, it could be well, good. Like, for example, I remember seeing the Dark Knight Rises uh, trailer a while back, and when I looked at it, I thought it looked pretty interesting, pretty good. And when I got around to seeing the movie, I didn't like it. Right, so there yeah, you I'm the go. minority. Trailers, like, trailers are not going to be the end all, do all. They're just meant to be a teaser. They're meant to get you, you know, interested. But you know, something that is already as publicized as the Slender Man concept. I mean, you don't really even need a trailer. You know. Um, oh yeah, people, totally. You know, they could have probably done a minimalist approach, almost like a Blair Witch style, with very little information and just, you know, hey, it's the Slender Man, and, and let that kind of speak for itself and it would probably still get asses in seats. Um, I plan to go see it uh, because, you know, I'm a creepy pasta writer and I'm a creepy pasta guy. So obviously when they make a movie about it, I'm going to a creepy pasta go, reader, <laughs> go check it out. Exactly. So um, I like the fact that they are going with a, I think horror should have relatively lesser known actors. Um, and oh, I yeah, like the totally. fact that uh, they're kind of going with a, you know, not a huge celebrity, you know, list. It's not like George Clooney and Brad Pitt fight the Slender Man. You know, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> Dark Hunter says, good. let's see how Joey King does with horror. Absolutely. Anthony McLeod, how the hell are you? Um, but yeah, I think um, a talented yet somewhat under publicized cast is the right way to go with horror because it kind of helps with, in my opinion, it helps with the immersion. You know, if I'm looking at, you know, you know some super A-lister, you know, it, it kind of takes away from the fact that, it, you know, you're supposed to get pulled into this world where they're representing a character. So I like that. I think they're doing that right. Oh, yeah, totally. And I'm going to say it now. I do predict there will be a few jump scares. I'm just hoping that the movie is, it's, it's just, an, it's, I don't want there to be like, Nothing but jump scares, you know? Like, I hope there's genuine genuine horror put in there. Yeah, I think that's going to be so the it thing. Like... I mean, it's going to have to be atmospheric, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Be prepared for artistic licensing, you know, out of the ass with it, because that's just what they're going to do. Um, yeah, Because, I mean, exactly. for one thing, the original Slender Man, you know, story, if you want to call it that, or, you know, the, the original little entry for that uh, meme contest that sparked the Slender Man, 
Yeah, uh, uh, Eric Knudsen made him. Yeah, very short. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot to it. Uh, you really can't make an hour and a half film out of just what Eric Knudsen put on the internet, right? You got to oh, yeah. you got to build on that. Uh, just like they they couldn't have made an entire Channel Zero season out of you know what Chris Straub wrote for Candle Cove. You got to build and expand on it. So expect a lot of artistic licensing as long as they don't decide to go the Super Mario Brothers movie route and oh, God. completely rewrite everything. You oh know? man, don't even don't even bring that up, man. It's like the Slender Man is now the he's actually now the average height, weight, and build man. And he has face. <laughs> With me, I believe that a creep pasta can actually work as a TV show or a movie. You just gotta make sure you're doing it right. And I think you should get the original author involved in this so they, they'll know how it should go so they don't mess anything up, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, it just really, it, it all depends, you know, because any high-profile author out there who has their books adapted into movies, and this goes from Stephen King to Anne Rice to Clive Barker, to everybody else, they're going to transform the crap out of your film, or out of your out of your writing. You just have to kind of be ready for that. I mean... There, there is a science behind it. What works on the page does not necessarily always work on the screen. Um, a reading audience, there's a lot less of an expectation of apologetic writing, so to speak, to a reading audience, whereas a viewing audience has a much shorter amount of time to connect with these characters. So they need... A uh, prime example would be like Stephen King's Thinner, which is one of my favorite stories and movies. Yeah, you know, I want to read that like really badly. I want to read that. It's so I'm gonna spoil it for you though, because I have to to make this point. But you know, just right, plug it in. But you know, like in the book, he kills himself at the end, but he does so, you know, in more of a poetic justice kind of way. Whereas in the movie, it's more of like, yeah, he's gonna do it, but oh, here's an opportunity for revenge for him. You know, it almost seems like television and, and movie audiences require more. You know, this is why it's happening. This is why it's okay. You know, whereas book audiences, they have a lot more time to connect, and therefore, I don't know, man. It just seems like authors we're, we're a lot we're a little bit more brutal on our on our audience, our readers than than movies and TVs are. TV shows have to kind of you know, you, you, they couldn't just go out there and shoot old Yeller in the movie. You know, they had to make sure you knew he was rabid, and you had to know that the kid really didn't want to shoot him. The oh, book yeah. would have just been like, oh, that damn dog is barking. In. You know what, Sonny Jim, go on out there and put some blood <laughs> in. So, yeah, it's a different audience, so you're going to have to kind of expect that. Adaptations are always into that, and I guarantee you you're going to have, you know, horror snobs, and if there are creepypasta snobs, they'll be like, you know, oh, the Slender Man stories were better. Well, you're always going to have that. I say yeah. best of luck. I'll be there to see the movie. I think it's going to be great, and uh, either way, it's great that the creepypasta genre is getting representation on the silver screen. So. Most definitely. And like, I'll admit, like I was a little skeptical about the movie when I first saw the trailer. Like I, for a little bit of a second thought that maybe it was going to be bad, but then I realized, oh, well, yeah, the movie hasn't come out yet. So how do you know if it's going to be bad or not? So exactly. give the film a chance. And I'm like yeah. all these other people who are judging it online saying it's going to bomb. It's going to suck. Well, how do you know that? The trailer may not look impressive to you, but the movie itself might not be that way. So if anything, I'm going to give the film a chance and I'm going to watch it as soon as I can. Like, I'm probably not going to see it on, on opening day, but hopefully when I when I do get around to seeing it, um, hopefully I'll enjoy it. Like, I'm at least hoping that it'll be average. Like, it won't be like spectacularly amazing or a complete dud. I'm you hoping know? it'll be spectacularly amazing. But... Um... <laughs> Well, we shall see, man. Like I said, I there are movies out there that I absolutely freaking love that are just hated universally by almost every single person in the world. Like yeah, I, for um, me, it's Man I, of Steel. <laughs> for me, it was, and for all of the the horror aficionados listening right now, here's your here's your test of metal. But I don't know. There, there used to be this company called Apex. And Apex made really, really crappy low budget films that went straight to VHS and I'm giving my age away a little bit on that but they went straight to VHS and they were all freaking awful damn man you're I old loved, I loved the crap 
out of every single one of them. And they had one called the Ice Cream Man, which was... I've little, heard of that one, yeah. Yes, it had Clint <laughs> Howard as uh, the, the brother of Ron Howard playing the killer in that movie. And yes, Jacob, I, I believe it does come out Friday. I freaking loved it. I love that they. I think. I think Apex also made the dentist and the dentist sequel. I don't know if you ever saw that one with Corbin no, Burns. I assume you said that. I sort of think about the dentist song from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> no, not not that dentist. You'll be a dentist. Uh, you know, my wife was in the live production of that Little Shop really? of Horrors. Oh wow! Yeah, she was awesome. inside the plant operating it. She was the the Audrey two operator. Oh sweet man! Yeah, she was walking me through it, and it sounds like a freaking nightmare it's like there's four different plants and each one's a different size as it progressively gets bigger and like she's like the first one's like a little hand puppet and it's all nice and easy and then like the last one you get in there and you have to like you have to like sit cross-legged inside of this thing and like one arm operates the mouth and then one foot operates the leaves and then you have to sync the mouth moving along with the voice actor who's off stage doing the voice of the plant and she was telling me it was just an absolute nightmare. She was, came out just dripping in sweat when it was all said and done. But um, oh dang! But there's 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 a little bit of a uh, little shop of horror trivia from old K Banning to to everybody out there. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Slenderman film, by the way, I want to mention that it's I think it's good that they didn't make this movie like they didn't like rush it out like back when Slenderman was like was like at the peak of his popularity, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's good that they actually waited this long because well, movies take time; they're an art form. I feel like that if they made that movie back in like say 2012 when his popular when it was like really popular when he was skyrocketing in popularity, like I felt like that would have been like a huge cash grab, you know? Right? Yeah, possibly. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, people could have seen it like that, you know. But here's what people kind of fail to understand with these things. I don't know if it's a bigger challenge or not. For I would almost feel like it's a bigger challenge for the people making the Slender Man film because you got to figure when when Freddy Krueger debuted in the 80s, the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, they didn't have internet stories of they didn't have internet back then. There's no Freddy Krueger creepy pasta story about this guy. You know, he was a completely original theme. Um, so in a lot of ways, you know, Wes Craven, I think directed the first one. Um, I could be wrong on that. Don't roast. Oh, me. No, no, no. He did. He did. Um, good. Good. Got to sound smart for once. I know Johnny Depp was. <laughs> one of them too. Um, oh yeah. But here's the thing. Like, like, it was kind of like the, it was a double-edged sword because one, it's like, okay, we can make the Freddy Krueger character and we can make him however we want because he's our character. And of course, at the same time, you have to sell this character now to the world as something to be afraid of or to enjoy or to whatever. And then you come back around to Slender Man. Once again, it's a double-edged sword uh, because, yeah, he's already known. So you put the movie out there and the name of it kind of speaks volumes already. But now you've got all this expectation. You know, you didn't have all these, all these snobs of horror sitting in the first Freddy Krueger movie and going, oh, no, 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 let me tell you. Freddy is supposed to be burnt more on the left than on the right. It's just like that in the story. And why is he wearing that hat? Everyone knows he doesn't wear a hat. You know, you, you didn't have that because nobody knew what the hell Freddy was all about yet. You know, with Slender Man, I feel like you're going to have a lot of that. Slender Man's going to do something and you're going to have somebody have a conniption fit and go, no, Slender Man would never do that. Uh, so, like I said, they got double challenges right there. He would never wear a boiler suit and a hat with a feather on top. It's like, what's he doing shining his shoes? That's, that's one thing that does kind of <laughs> perplex me about that. Like, why is this thing taking the time to, you know, get so posh? Like, shouldn't it just be out there savagely doing its thing? Does it pick its suit before it goes out? Is it just like, you know, okay, I'm going to go like, with What kind the... of tie to wear? Exactly. Does he tie his own tie or does it just grow out of his body? I don't. I don't really... Does his slender mama do it? I, I'm, somebody taught him how to slender tie that tie. So I'm going <laughs> to tell you, I'm 38 years old, and, and sometimes I still struggle to get a decent knot going. So, yeah, hey, he I didn't can, just I, crawl like, out of the ground. He didn't just crawl out of the ether and start tying ties, man. That takes I, up. I couldn't do a tie like when I was younger. Like I think my dad had to help me out when I was going to prom, and I had to put on a tie. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know how to tie a bow tie. So it's um, good luck. <laughs> hopefully I never wind up in a situation where I'm expected to wear a bow tie. Cause it'll be clip on city all day. <laughs> uh, Slender man with a bow tie or maybe like just a clip on tie. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you think he would wear a clip on because you know, if somebody's trying to fight back. If he's grabbing him, they grab him by the tie and they're like, Oh, I got you now. Motherfucker. And it's like, Oh no, the tie came off in my hand. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like That's if fine. Slenderman wants to hunt people, he's going to hunt people uh, nicely dressed. Hey, I mean, I'm telling you, the dude, uh, you know, I I guess. The, the one thing I don't, the one thing I never liked about the Slenderman uh, concept, though, was like, you know, I like the idea of villains that I guess you can kind of fight um, if you had to. Or Slenderman just kind of has like that ethereal nonsense going on, like, you know, Oh, you look at them and you start feeling queasy and then you fall down and then you die. You know, I, I like the idea of something. One of the things like going back to Nightmare on Elm Street, one of the things that I always loved about that franchise was the fact that these kids would go into the dreams and, you know, they all kind of had like their own powers against Freddy and they could kind of fight back against Freddy. And sometimes they'd get a few licks in on him, you know, before they'd eventually screw up and he'd take over. Slender Man just seems like, no, you look at him and, you know, your whole world goes static and then you fall down and you puke on your shoes and you shit your pants and then he kills you at the end. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, man. I like, I, like a, I like a story where a protagonist can actually legitimately pick up a, a, a baseball bat or something and, and crack the Slender Man across his head Basically, a Basically, just fight back, defend themselves. Yeah. He's way too, like, just, you know... I don't know. He's kind of mixing and matching uh, incorporeal and corporeal powers there. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure they'll nerf him or OP him one of the two in the movie. Who knows, man? Who knows? Maybe they'll actually make him vulnerable. Who well, uh, Who really knows? And hey, if we're lucky, maybe we'll get a backstory on him. Well, he is vulnerable to good fashion. Ah, uh, yes. Very spiffy-like. Yes. I wish I had a suit as awesome as Slender's. He rents. He runs. <laughs> he yeah. goes to the men's warehouse. He does. He's gonna like the way he looks. He guarantees it. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I'll be there. I mean, I'm probably not gonna go opening day either, uh, but I will, of course, see it. And um, you know, I will hope. Like I said, I'm I, pros and cons for me. You know, I wish it was rated R, just so they could. Yeah, this is Slender Man we're talking about. Slender Man. I mean, I know, it's not, it's not, not gory about, or anything like that, but it's very we're psychological. We're talking about Stout Man here. We're not talking about kind of beefy man, you know. No, it's Slender. God damn it. He gets an R rating. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he does. But, um, you know, like that, that that's, I think it's going to be a little bit restricted because of that. Um, ironically, yeah. R and rated R stands for restricted, and I would have settled for that, but not the kind of restricted it's going to get with that PG-13 rating. And But like I said, I like I like the somewhat unknown cast. Um, I haven't, I'm not too familiar with Joey King. I'll have to see some of, uh, some of their Me other either. work. Uh, but that's a good thing. Like I said, I mean, if I if I can't immediately point out the actor actress, then uh... all right, Jacob, take it easy, man. Thanks for stopping by. Jacob Potter said he's got a dip. All right, but, see uh, you, Jacob. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, you know that's that's a point in its favor for me, though. If uh, it's kind of got an unknown cast, and like I said, I I don't know if it's a, you know advantageous or disadvantageous to be working with a already established kind of cultural phenomenon in the Slender Man himself there. But, um, oh, Wendingus. Oh, what is going on? Thank you for coming by. PG-13 horror. No, I concur completely. Uh, PG-13 horror is not horror. It is just slightly scary, like goosebumps level stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my rundown on it there, Lance. I think it's going to, I'm going to hold judgment till I see it. And then I, we can yeah. circle back and have like a post, uh, post Slender Man movie. Yeah. have like a little follow up stream where we just talk about our thoughts and we like review it in a way. Exactly. Awesome. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Ironically enough, speaking of Slender Man, I mentioned that they should give him a backstory, at least some kind of backstory in the in the film. Like, I'm open to that kind of thing. And weirdly enough, back when I was 16, when I was going through my whole Slenderman, Slenderman craze, I was actually thinking of a backstory like uh, myself. <laughs> I, I don't remember what I said, but I think I remember saying that his real name was Liam something. Liam. That's a yeah. decent enough name for him as any, I suppose. I don't know any Liam, so that works. You know, it's not like my mind will go right to, like, some kid I was like in the fourth grade with who was like a big douchebag or something. Like, oh, wait, I hated that guy. Yeah. Like Randy. 
Randy. Randy's just a little <laughs> Randy just had a hard time, dude. Uh, I'll be writing yeah. the Randy installment real soon in my Jeff the Killer series. So uh, Awesome. I can't wait for that. I think Randy's going to get some uh, humanity points uh, in his in his favor. I think people might come to find that Randy was more of a victim of circumstance than in just an antagonistic prick. But um, I'm yeah, not going to spoil it. I like that. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not going to throw out spoilers there too much. You just got to wait for me to write the story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, long story short, I had a big Slenderman craze back when I was in high school. So, yeah. It's pretty awesome. Hmm, something wrong with that. So, what was, what was the rest of the backstory? So, his name is Liam. Uh, I remember that he kept a diary where he just told about a lot of his thoughts uh, growing up and what life was like for him. How he suffered from... This uh, genetic disorder, like I, I can't remember what it was called, but there's, it's a disorder disorder where you're um, basically really tall. You grow really, really tall. Yeah, hey, I think like that's like what Abraham Lincoln had, isn't it? Like, I don't know, I don't know, but it was something like that. And all throughout his life, he was basically looked at as a freak. Mm -hmm. Even the townspeople are generally afraid of him. Like when he grows up to be an adult, like they're generally afraid of his presence because he's so tall. He looks very shady, and people think that he could do a lot of wrongdoing. When in reality, he's actually. really just a kind soul, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not trying to make him like a Mary Sue or anything like that. Just make him like um, someone you can relate to in a way. Well, that's good writing. I mean, if you know, in a lot of my writing, I give give a lot of my bad guys pretty yeah. good bad stories. Um, because nobody, nobody, nobody's really like born just to be a bad guy. Like, I don't think anybody pops out the womb and like, you know, as soon as they uh, – as soon as they start walking and talking, they just start killing folks. You know, I think uh, yeah, th there's always usually a reason why, and so I like to do that. I, I did that a lot in my Tobit series. I gave a lot of my bad mm -hmm. guys backstories to kind of explain how they got there and why they why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, ironically enough, I would have made uh, Sunman out to be an urban legend as he's already been betrayed as and as the years have gone by. Like, uh, I would have him, like, get blamed for something. Like, say, if uh, someone was kidnapped in the town, like, people automatically assume that it was him who did it. And so they go after him, and they burn his house down, and they, they torture and kill him in the process. It kind of sounds like a lot like Candyman, Candyman in a way. <laughs> that was a great film. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they basically just, they, they, they uh, kill him, basically. They stretch out his limbs. They um, cover his face with uh, maybe, like, plaster or something like that. Something white, like, give him that little white complexion where his senses are completely covered up and he can't breathe. And so he gets killed off and there, and it's, it starts like an urban legend where basically he now haunts the woods of the uh, place he was killed in. And he also kills anyone in the town he comes across if they venture into his territory. Yeah, Something okay. like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, here, here we are in the comments. Let's look in here. Marfan syndrome. That is correct. Thank you. Wendingus and Eli. That is, I believe what makes you taller than you should be. Um, Marfan syndrome. So that, that might be the. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe you can do your slender. You know, you can always do a slender man fan fiction. You know, just just get a story out there, man. <laughs> just just tell it. You know. Yeah. Ironically enough, I actually do plan on writing my own work. Sometimes I have some ideas going through my head, but I haven't had time to actually jot them down. I will eventually, but for right now, I want to keep uh, making my video my videos until I feel like I'm ready to start writing stuff down because. I got some pretty awesome ideas. Um, Eli says that the actor who plays Slenderman in the movie has the disease. Um, I have not, I was not aware of that. That is, oh, wow. um, that's incredible. Um, that is, that is, that is cool that, I mean, it's not cool that he has this, but it is well, cool yeah. that he's able to use, you know, this to, you know, you know, to land this role and to, to, to bring Slender Man to life. Exactly. Yeah, so, I wasn't saying it was a good thing that he had it. I just meant yeah, like, in it's, that sad that he has it's it, good that he could bring him, to, bring him to life. Right, but it, and he's, he's going to have it regardless. So the fact that he's able to make something successful out of it is awesome. That that's that's what I love about that. Because I mean, if he doesn't act, he's still going to have it. But if you know, if having it can get him this role, I mean, that is like turning a negative into a positive right there. Yeah, so, uh, good, uh, good with uh, Excuse me, Hudahudin's Revenge. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. How he mentioned that there was going to be a Slenderman film, right? And he said that Doug Jones was going to play him, which I've seen most of Doug Jones's work, and he's pretty awesome in every role he's in. He mostly works as like a stunt double for most things. 
but I guess uh, something maybe it was for a different project or maybe they just changed their minds and got someone else. But either way, um, despite the fact that he's not going to be playing Slitherman in this, I'm still going to see it regardless because it still looks interesting in my eyes. So um, let's see here. Dark Huntress, he can use it to his advantage for roles like this. Absolutely he can. Oh, yeah. This Javier Baudet, am I saying that right? I hope. Played Mama in Well Mama. Uh, oh, wow. He is incredible because Mama was a very incredible. I, I enjoyed the hell out of Mama. I didn't. I never saw it though. I heard it was really freaky though, really scary. Not to be confused with throwing Mama off the train, which is an '80s movie, I believe, where they <laughs> tried to throw somebody's mother off of a train. Oh, uh, Mama! He played <laughs> Man in the Conjuring too. Look at this. We got some some regular old uh, celebrity experts out there. Thank <laughs> Horror you. enthusiasts. Yes. I'm getting more enthused as we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes, we are. Oh, hey, yeah, speaking of uh, creepypasta, creepypasta films, like, do you remember seeing that trailer for Jeff the Killer? Which one? There's quite a few on YouTube that people have made. Uh, well, there was a much more professionally made trailer. They were setting up a GoFundMe for it, and they had a trailer release for it where Jeff is just like, walking around doing creepy stuff and whatnot. I think that's the one that got shut down. Though. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the author Sessler was, it was able to get the whole thing shut down, which eh, I mean, say what you will. I honestly would give Jeff the killer a chance, but my expectations for it being a good film were kind of low. Um, I mean, look, anything can be anything, man. I mean, when you, when you yeah. look at some of the most successful film franchises and movies out there they come from some of them come from very small you know ideas some of them come from almost just nothing really and still turn into just massively successful you know uh things so look the right director the right actors the right you know the right people behind it could turn just about anything into gold more than likely if they had the time and the money and the resources and, and, and the talent I have no doubt that a Jeff the Killer movie could be great. Now, I would probably, obviously, you know, that you always have to have your suspension of disbelief. But even in the way that I wrote, when I wrote, when I rewrote, you know, um, Jeff the Killer into the 2015 series, you know, one thing that I strive for is that realism because, yes, yeah, suspension of disbelief is great and all, but it is like a rubber band, you know, it's only going to go so far. You do have to infuse. A good deal of realism into things you know even if it's unrealistic it still has to be realistic if that makes any sense to you so jeff oh, no, it does with, it does jeff with super strength and kung fu powers and all this other kind of stuff coming out of nowhere that would be stupid but yeah it, it would be it really would be having him go into psychotic rages and gain strength from that you know that would be something that the audience could then go okay well that that's why he's like that because he's crazy so stuff like that is kind of how i would like probably try to write around that uh, yeah yeah totally i think that they can make the movie but you know there is there are people who do own the jeff the killer you know concept and you know, they're, they're going to have to do it the right way. Absolutely. They're going to have to, you know, do their homework, take their time, get in touch with the right people, make the right deals. Like that's, that's the only way that's going to happen. I mean, if somebody just tries to make the movie and in the, the fact that the, the Jeff, the killer movie that you're referencing, the fact that it did have a professional kind of shine to it, that's probably what got it shut down because, you know, the people who own the rights probably looked at it and said, Oh no, people are going to really try to potentially make, Money. This isn't just, you know, kids out in the street making a YouTube video. Yeah. So, I mean, look, do it, do, do it the right way, folks. Get in touch with the people. Do your homework. Put the time and effort into it and make an awesome movie. Um, Eli Thompson says, go. if they do make a movie, they should base it off of your version. Thank you, Eli. I, I agree 100%. So, and I also agree 100%. Yeah, totally. I, I'm all for it. And I guess this is where we get into the subject of your version. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it to it. <laughs> All right. So um, I take it you most people know the backstory about how this whole thing got started. Basically, there was a contest being held for a new Jeff the Killer story. 
and you were the one who initiated it, correct? Well, what happened was in, I want to say, early 2015, late 2014, a vote was put out on the Creepypasta wiki to remove the original, you know, what everybody knows as the original Jeff the Killer because it was no longer in compliance with the quality standards of the site. People were getting pissed off because, you know, we were deleting stories that were better written than Jeff the Killer. It's still not meeting the standards, though, yet Jeff the Killer stayed on because it kind of had that legend status to it. Um, we did not, we as the admin team, did not initiate that concept to delete it. It was brought up by the users. It was a vote. And that is why the original Jeff the Killer was moved to the Jeff the Killer wiki, which I think unfortunately has become the Just the Kittens wiki or something like that. Yeah, it got hacked a while ago. But um, yeah, so that that was that. And then there was no Jeff for a while. And then a lot of people (laughs) came back and they were saying, hey, Jeff the Killer should be here. It deserves to be here. It's it's an icon. It's a legend. It's a classic. And I agree with every bit of that. I did vote in favor of deleting it, though, the original, just because as an admin, you know, it's you kind of got to play by the rules when it comes to that. It's, if, if it doesn't meet the standards, it doesn't meet the standards, you know, um, simple as that. So, but I do, but the, you know, the, the administrator in me was like, yeah, it should go. The artist in me was like, it is a story of value to the community and to the genre. So what do we do? So, um I came up with the idea to have a contest and um, this went through several layers of voting. Um, we voted on the votes to vote, you know, pretty much is, is this, we, we did an initial poll. Is this something that people would want to see is would people want a Jeff the killer contest to replace the original story. And I think 66% of the vote was yes let's do it bring it back um i made it abundantly clear from the start that i intended to enter it i wanted to give everybody an opportunity if they thought that it was in bad taste for me to propose and also enter the contest i wanted to give everybody a chance to say so um, because as soon as as soon as we greenlit the contest you know i was comply handed the reins over to Oh, I believe the admin was called underscore at the time. I don't think he's not an admin anymore, but I immediately handed the reins over to him. I said, dude, I, it's, I can no longer have any, any official, you know, uh, influence or, or contact with this outside of entering it. Um, and then they set the rest of everything else up. I entered like everybody else and I won. So um, that's kind of the story of the contest. Hello, Lance. Welcome. Lance with a question mark. How many lances we had? <laughs> hey, you can never have too many lances. I I, I agree. Bring them on. Um, so so that, that's kind of the story. Every, of the every lance you know. <laughs> but that is really interesting, though. Okay, that really is. And I will say, when I first read your um, your story, like I read the original before uh, the one on spin pasta. You, the one you mentioned on Spin Pasta, the uh, writer's cut. Oh yeah, there's a creator's cut for you guys listening. If you if you want to read the the longer version, uh, the one on the Creepypasta wiki is edited because I went way over the word count. Um, so there is the creator's cut on Spin Pasta. There is the regular 2015 on Creepypasta wiki. All links are on my profile page. Go forth and do check them out and enjoy, please. <laughs> it's kind of funny though, because I actually did recently scroll through all the, like most of the comments that you keep receiving on that version, the uncut or sorry, the cut version, <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, this guy is getting so much hate. I wonder how he deals <laughs> with so the nice, aren't they? <laughs> oh boy, they're so nice on there. Yeah, it's always this is the worst one. The original one is so much better. I'm like, well, it's really awesome that you can still read the original one. Then that's that's good. Go go over to just the kittens, and you know. Enjoy. Get your <laughs> get your fill of that original. Um, like I will admit, from a lot of people who have reviewed your 2015 story, I feel like they just don't know about the uh, the uncut version. But the cut version by itself is actually good. It's not terrible. But well, thank you. Yeah, it's not. I mean, yeah, some things are left out and some things feel a little unexplained. But it's not terrible. 
Yeah, and, well, you know, it's like I always say. I mean, um, when it comes to um, writing or any kind of art, you know, everything is subjective. You yeah, know, yeah. we as creators, all we do is we provide the content because we love to do it. We share the content because we have, you know, an undeniable, uh, you know, desire to do so. And what the reader, the viewer, the listener, what they take from it, whether they appreciate it, whether they hate it, that is its value in so many ways, at least to each person. Um, do the comments, you know, when, when people kind of shit on that story, does it bug me? You know, in a way, I'm glad I wrote that story, and I'll tell you. <clears throat> oh, hi, Fallout. Welcome. Hello, um, hello. In a way, <clears throat> I'm glad I wrote it. And in a way, well, I'm not going to say I'm glad it gets shit on, but it was an important step in my progression, I think, to experience that. Because before 2015, the majority of my stuff, Secret Bar and the Tobit series and so forth, received pretty good, re you know, pretty good reactions. I mean, there were negative comments here and there, but it was never like trolly, like, you know, Ooh, zero out of 10 straight garbage. You know, it was never any of that shit. <laughs> you know, it was always, you know, it was constructive criticism, but there was usually like, so I kind of got accustomed to positive feedback. Um, and I'm trying not to sound like some humble brag douchebag when I say that, but I mean, it, it, <laughs> I'm like it's some writers in the community. It's, it's just the truth. You know, I kind of got, I kind of got accustomed to receiving good feedback. So when I remember I published or posted wherever you want to call it the 2015, it was late in uh, on a December night. I found out that I won and then I got the green light from, you know, the rest of the admin team to go ahead and, and, and put that fucker up on the site. And, um, I think I got home from work and put it up and then like went to bed. And then the next morning I get up and I remember uh, LOL Skeletons, who, who has been a long time member of the, you know, uh, Creep Pots. Okay, he, he had texted me on uh, Discord and he was like, dude, you're getting fucking roasted. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I went, I looked at the first comment and it was, not, it was a decent comment. And then I looked at the second one and it was okay. I'm like, all right, I'll see where's the roasting. And it's like, oh. Oh, there. right there. Yeah, yeah it wasn't weird. like it wasn't like oh this was a good try but it fell a little bit short could use some improvement no it was like this writer with quotes you know, quotation marks around the world right <laughs> oh this writer pull out the big guns right there yeah I should chop off his hands and burn his computer and good jump God. off his balcony and no I didn't I mean it wasn't those exact words but that's pretty much what it was it was like oh, this man. this is horrible and you should hate yourself. For making it and you should die at the end. And, um, hey, here's my response. Do you think you could do better? My response is, hey, tell me where to send the refund. Oh, wait, it's free. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man. Uh, but, you know, I'm glad, though, like now, now in 2018, now that I've written, you know, four more sequels to the damn thing and um, working on the fifth right now. Um, you know, I'm glad I got that experience. I'm glad I got that. Um, because you never know when, you know, when the trolls are going to strike. It just happens out of the blue for some people. And I'm glad, you know, you, you have to learn, you know, they, they say like, you know, a lot of teams have to learn to win and some teams have to learn to lose. And, and, you know, to me, it was a matter of learning to kind of learning to fail in a way. Like, and, and the way you yeah. learn to fail is you, it's not that you thrive to fail, but you learn how to deal with that without completely, you know, losing all of your confidence and going, oh no, they didn't like it. I'm done. Delete the account. We're out of here. No, you know, the thick skin, <laughs> the thick skin that people talk about, and I, I've said this before, the thick skin is not, you look at the negative shit comments you look at the troll comments or the vitriol comments and you just go whatevs and you keep rolling no that shit still can have an effect you know because as writers creators artists whatever we are attached to our work we're given a piece of ourselves you know out there um i mean maybe if you're I mean, that, that's why there's a difference between an artist who paints for museums and 
a person who paints houses. Yes, both of those people are putting paint to surface, but a guy creating works of art for a museum, that's a piece of his soul going on to that canvas. Whereas a person who professionally paints houses for a living, they're just following a set of, you know, instructions, make this wall blue, done, you know? So yeah, I mean, I guess if I was just some ghostwriter who got a paycheck to make it and was just like, yeah, write me a Jeff the Killer story. Okay, here you go. And I got paid and they're just like, oh, this is, gr maybe I wouldn't give a shit. Maybe I would just be like, oh, well, whatever, you know, still got paid. But no, it's always gonna, it's always gonna sting if you care about your work. It's always gonna sting a little bit. The thick skin, the perseverance that comes in the ability to keep going, you know, to write sequels, to know that you're going to post this and somebody out there is going to be like, oh my God, Jeff the Killer, what is this? Some kind of tweeno, you know, uh, angry edgelord. <laughs> you know, you already know that bullshit's coming and you do yeah. it anyway because you love the story, you love the characters, and you want to give your readers something that you from you to them and that's what it's all about so people can sit there and say edge lord and whatever bullshit they want to say the bottom line is if i make one person if i make one person happy if one reader listens to it or you know reads it listens to it on you know narration whatever and they come away with a positive emotional impact then i've done my fucking job and you can <laughs> call me whatever the hell you want Good advice, my man. Thank you, Wendingus. I appreciate that. It's the uh... Most definitely. And I will say this, though. Um, out of all creepypasta authors I've seen and some that we've agreed with can't take criticism, you actually are one of the very few out there who I think takes criticism like really well and even can joke around with it sometimes. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a lot of people out there who would disagree. People claim that I'm bad at taking criticism, but in all reality, I mean... No, that's someone like say slime beast. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't resist. It's like in your Jeff the Killer story. Like I couldn't resist a small jab. <laughs> well, you know, I used to have this meme that I had on my Twitter or something like that, and it was like, you know, never fuck with writers because you know anything you say or do will be used against you in their next story. But um, but um, but no, you know, I, I've. Not everybody, you know, not, I don't always coat myself in uh, the shiniest layer of grace. There have been times that I think maybe a particularly nasty, shitty review has maybe just caught me off guard a little bit. And I've been like, whoa, what the shit is going on with this dude, man? You took that much time to write this long of a response to some crap that you said you didn't like from the start. So why the hell did you finish the whole fucking thing? But either way, you know, it's like Yelp reviewers, man. It's like, you, you just got to like... You got to dig into the reviews and you got to see why they're doing it. You know, if somebody legitimately reads a story and wants to take the time to critique it because they had, they were impacted by it, then if the critique is negative, then that's fine because you can look into that and you can maybe find ways to improve. But when it's just people that are just like, well, this wasn't everything that I thought it should be. So let me just fucking just, you know, crap all over this guy because I've got a computer in front of me and nobody can see what I'm doing. So click, click, click. Ha ha. You know, that's the shit where you're just like, all right, get your vitriolic bullshit out of here, dude. Like we got, we got writing to do, man. Come on. You got time to write this bullshit review. I got time to write a story. So you know what, you know, do you homie? It goes hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, a lot of people who do review this story, like some YouTubers out there, but I've seen a lot of them don't really have good arguments as to why they don't like the story. I think it's low hanging fruit when it comes to. Yeah, I agree. Cause Jeff the killer has been bashed and beaten a lot by a lot of people on YouTube. Just the mere fact that someone actually went out, you went out and wrote your own remake of the story. And now it's considered to be the official Jeff the killer story up on the wiki. And now people are seeing this and they're thinking that it's just another Jeff story and they'll just bash on it and say it's bad regardless of what's in it. And a lot of these reviewers that I've seen just, well, they don't have any good arguments and I'm sorry to say this, but I do like a lot of these people who, who have reviewed stories like this. Like, um, I really enjoy the show bad creepypasta and I honestly didn't agree with them on their thoughts on Jeff, the killer 2015. Well, neither did I, <laughs> uh, but ironically enough, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, well, yeah. they didn't have valid criticism against it in my eyes. And 
honestly, I just thought they just didn't give it a chance. They just bashed on it just because it's Jeff the Killer. Well, like I was talking about to you the other night, there's a formula that goes into reviewing something. Okay, there's a formula to critique. And the way these guys on YouTube are doing it is is the wrong fucking way. Like, you can't live read a story and critique as you go because you make an ass ton of mistakes. Like, I was telling you about the one guy that was trying to read through Scars of Corruption. And yeah, he, doesn't uh, understand, he doesn't understand the flipping context. So yeah. it's just like, I don't understand. This is terrible writing. Why is this here? Why is that there? Why are we doing... And it's like, well, dude, if you read the whole fucking story first and you wrote a goddamn, like, uh, not a book report, but essentially, you know, like a breakdown to the things you wanted to point out as opposed to just live narrating my shit on your channel, you know, but doing funny voices instead of just reading it. Like, if you actually researched, read the story, and, and you know, then you'd actually, you, you, you'd have better criticism. It wouldn't just be you doing silly voices it would be an actual professional, you know, like, okay, here's the pros and the cons and the this and the that, you know, of the story, um, as opposed to you just going, because a lot of times something will be set in motion at the start of a story that doesn't make any damn sense until the flipping end. And then it's like, oh, that's why you did that. But oh, that's why it to, happened. It all makes sense now. But when you're trying to live view you know when you're trying to live review a story you know with no visuals it's not even like uh what was the fucking thing with the one guy and the two robots mystery science you know like it's not even like that where at least you have the visuals of the movie to make fun of as you go you know you're you're yeah. literally reading and then trying to do that same formula and it doesn't work and that's why these reviews are not actual reviews they're just narrations with silly voices and, and snide comments thrown in here and there um, Eli says the reason yeah, most people sense, actually. Eli says the reason most people review things badly without a reason why is because they just want to create an argument. That yeah, that's absolutely true. Give attention, absolutely. Negativity gets views, it gets likes and shares. Absolutely. Um, when you uh, when you sit there and try to read something and, and be balanced with it, yes, people get bored. Um, when you do silly voices and you know crap all over it. People laugh and they stick around. So yes, I agree with you. Hundred percent there, Eli. Negativity sells, sadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is true. It really is. But overall, with my thoughts, um, I did really enjoy the story. I really did. I thought like the the way it was structured could have been improved on a little bit, but I won't get into that now. Like I'll, I'll save that for another time we'll have us to sit down about the we'll go through the uh the ups and downs of jeff the killer in 2015 yeah yeah exactly and uh, i kind of wish more people knew about the uh the uh writer's cuts because um, well, I, I feel like it explains more morgan thanks for stopping by it was a pleasure having you goodbye morgan thank you for stopping by but yeah um i i, I do wish more people would read the creator's cut also um, yeah i've thought about you know, I mean, I've got a link to it and everything. I've got it as, you know, findable as possible, you know, but most people do because the one on the wiki is going to get more traffic. Spin pasta, sadly, is, you know, it, it's in need of a revival. That that website is, yeah. you know. Um, and it makes sense as to why you would put uh, the sequels up on spin pasta. Well, one, because that's where the original story actually is. And two, well, I don't think the wiki would like all that word limit stuff that people well, can break so throw at you. I'd have to, we'd have to propose another contest for every, because every one would be another, you know, like blacklisted spinoff type thing. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> with spin pasta, people could upload anything on the wiki, no matter what it was. So with spin pasta, I have the freedom to write my, my Jeff stories there without fear of deletion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I loved your Tobit story, says Zach Gabriel. Thank you, Zach. I love that comment. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed them. And I love it, too. Well, anyways, yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I have not read all of your Jeff stories yet. I've only read the first two. And the reason for that is because... Well, I'm letting the audience know, not just not not you, because you've known about this like for the longest time. <laughs> I'm doing a mega collab for 
for the Jeff story. It's like al- almost every single one of them. Well, yeah, every single one of them so far, uh, year after year. And I might change the rules up for that one. Like I'm, I, I'll, I think I'll eventually do like two per year, but only when I feel like I'm ready to do it. Because I know there's going to be a lot in the series, right, Kay? Um, there's going to be at least three more um, than what I've got right now. So let's see. There be. I'm just going to count in my head if you want to keep chatting there. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good thing you're keeping these things going as long as they happen. It's like a, it's like an entire series. Well, it is an entire series. I'm sorry, but it's like episodic in a way. Yeah, I mean, it could go for up to nine or ten installments by the time it's said and done. Not counting the the four that are already, or counting the four that are there. You yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be like not yes. year after year at this point. Like uh, for the first two, I'll make it. I'll make it like uh, this year. I'll do 2015. The next year, I'll do Scars of Corruption. But after that, I think I'll end up just doing end up doing like two per year. Yeah, you may have to do two or three per year. Otherwise, you're going to yeah. Be- they're not they're not like a one day endeavor. Like these are really long stories. But are, I feel like are, it's good um, that way. Yeah. They're at least 20,000 words a piece. I think Jane, <laughs> like 25,000, and the Lou one that I just finished recently topped out at like 24,000. So, yeah. yeah, they are long. It's a long narration. <laughs> yeah, props to MCP, though, when he uh, did his narration on Scars of Corruption, like two hours long. And I'm, predict- I'm predicting this now. Like, I don't think he recorded that entire thing in just one sitting because I'm sure if he did, his voice would be in great oh, yeah. pain, especially oh, with yeah. the voice he gave um, Donald. Well, he did such a great job on Jane. Like, oh my God, I will listen to that. Maybe it sounds pretentious or, or braggadocious, but um, <laughs> I'll listen to my own work, you know, um, from narrators. And MCP did such a fantastic job with that Jane story. Oh my God, the music and the, the, the pacing, you know, it, it was like, it was one of those things where I'm just like, did I write this? Because <laughs> this seems better than what I could do. No, you did uh, not. It was an illusion. It was an illusion. But um, give me uh, one minute. I have to step up, um, talk to the people. I shall be right back. All right. Okay, guys, while we're waiting for Kay to get back, um, ask me some questions in the comment section. And I guess I'll just ramble on for a quick second. Um, I'll be honest. I haven't read all of Kay's work, although I do plan around to to get to that at some point. Like from what I've heard, his Tobit stories are are absolutely fantastic, as well as his other stories, like say Secret Secret Bar, for example, which a lot of people have narrated. Like <laughs> that's like his one is like his most popular story to be narrated amongst everyone here in the narration community. Like me, I never thought about doing it, but I want to do something that if I was going to narrate his stories, like aside from Jeff, the killer, like I would do something like, um, I would do a story that no one has ever done before. I know that Creeperoni has done like basically almost all of his stories, but sadly she's no longer doing narration from what I've heard. And that's a shame, but I don't know. Hopefully we'll see her again one day, but I want to do a lot of their stories where, well, (laughs) where basically no one's done before. And, he recently made a story called Total Universal Blackout, and I read that story, and it's pretty impressive, and I think I would like to cover that one day, and hopefully hopefully I can do it first uh, and make sure no one beats me to it. <laughs> you hear that? There's sounds right. in the background. I am back. Back like a heart attack. Here we go. <laughs> Get back in black. My mind is blown. I didn't know he was the one that wrote those. Oh man, we're dropping views right now. That's uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, who cares? We can just keep talking. I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? I'm having a great time, dude. It's I'm a blast. A time of my life. Yeah, hey guys out there in the audience, anybody who wants to ask questions, send them this way. If you're a fan of anything I've written and you want a little bit of insight into it, or if you just want to tell me that I'm a jackass. <laughs> well, I mean, you do call yourself the uh, community punching bag. And the literary punching bag of creepy pasta. It's true. <laughs> I'm the most talented person to get positive citations from Blumhouse and UK horror in the entire world. Yeah, you mentioned that with your Jeff story, you were actually interviewed like by some u- news outlets. Yeah. Yes, I was. Joe Hickey from uh, UK Horoscope um, interviewed me about that. 
So uh, that was really awesome. So whenever the trolls start coming in really nasty and, and, and really, game again, the original is better, what I do is I just print out my wonderful, wonderful praise from organizations like the 13th Floor by Blumhouse, and I just wipe those tears away. <laughs> uh, was the real Jeff ever present in any of the stories after 2015, like The Scars of Corruption Jane or Disturbingly Cruel, asks Eli. No. No, he was not. I found that out too, and that's pretty unfortunate. But I'm glad you've read them all. Check out the loose story there, Eli, if you haven't yet. When Dinga says it's true, I'm gonna punch you. That's okay. You can give me a good, uh, give me the business, pow. I'll take it. Oh, bam, baby. <laughs> uh, Jason, after after I say that, like multiple people are just gonna leave the leave the stream just like that. Just uh, I had to I had to open my mouth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, your Jeff stories are very well thought out, well organized, well paced, well told. I mean, what more can I say? They're pretty awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad you. I'm glad you like them. It, it, it was, you know, the reason why I went with the first one. The reason why I wanted to rewrite Jeff the Killer in the first place was just because it was a personal challenge to myself. You know, I was getting, I was having good luck with the reviews. Like I said, you know, I was getting a lot of good feedback. Or my stuff, and I don't know. Maybe it went to my head a little bit. I don't know. I always say to be a writer, you got to be to 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 write. You kind of have to be humble, but to promote, you got to kind of be cocky. So I don't know. Yeah, but either way, you know, I um maybe I let maybe I let my my positive reviews go to my head a little bit, and I just said, you know what, fuck it, I'll take on this Jeff shit. Everybody says it's terrible. Come here, Jeff. Let's see what me and you can do. <laughs> hey look i won the contest and i got on there so you know what awesome yeah a lot of people said that you actually rigged the contest with you winning it well people will say just about any goddamn thing i suppose um if there's any i'll tell you this if there's any black mark at all on that story it is the fact that i did propose and win the contest um even though i had no influence i had no you know activity in anything after presenting it for votes to see if uh, if they, if we wanted to have it, you know, besides asking the community question, hey, I want to do a Jeff rewrite contest. Do you think we should? And besides that point, I had no actual influence or involvement. I wrote a story and submitted it like everybody else. And I've always said I could be an admin, a bureaucrat, uh, the, the president of Creepypasta. I'm still <laughs> going to be a writer first. I'm still going to want to challenge myself. I'm still going to want to write. Yeah. And um, being having an orange uh, username on the creepypasta wiki or a green or a purple or whatever is not going to change the fact that I am a fucking creator first. Yeah. And that is what I will do. I will create. And in cases of Jeff the Killer, I will win. And like you said, <laughs> if anybody, half the trolls out there, I, I think we all kind of feel like, well, you know what? Let's go. Let's have look, write something better. Do it, I dare you. I'll give you a 45 minute head start with <laughs> bandage on every one of my fingers and I'll still I'll still type circles around there, trolley. It's like me whenever somebody said well, I don't say I think oh, how about you try? You try to make it better. Like whenever someone says I'm a bad narrator, I've gotten some bad comments before in the past, and I usually just respond all professionally to them and I oftentimes like them. <laughs> But um, started kind of trolling the trolls for a little while. Um, in a little, in a, in a way, yeah, it is. It was kind of like that for quite a while. Yeah, I, but I don't. I don't, I don't say like, okay, you do the same story. Let's see, you can do. Let's see if you can do better. But no, I don't respond that kind of way. Oh, the crow flies has flown on in. The crow flies. Hey, what's up? What is up with you? Welcome, Wendingus. It would be silly to assume that a writer isn't allowed to write. I damn agree one thousand percent with that. And. Uh, Dark Hunter says she deletes hate comments. I agree with that. I wish we could do that on the wiki sometimes. And Blindfold Soul says hi. Hi, Blindfold. Hi. Thanks for coming in. Nice little surge of activity. Honestly, I, I leave my hate comments up. Like, I guess it just shows like there's like a mixed opinion thing going on in the comment section. Like, it shows that not everyone is going to like the story uh, that I read or me in general. Like, it offers like a, a good, uh, I guess you could say, diversity to it. Or make it like really opinionated. I don't know, but I would take my really negative oh, yeah. vitriolic yeah. comments for a while, and I would um, 
I would put them, uh, I would go on like my Canva account or something like that and make like this really pretty, like motivational banner type thing out of them. And I would just put it up on my Twitter for fun. <laughs> be like, great garbage, original better, zero out of 10. And I'd put it all in this beautiful font. And I'd be like, this guy gets it right here. This guy gets why right. This guy, this guy's going somewhere. Crow Flies tells me that he was about to go to bed, and then he saw that we was on and came on by. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Look, hanging out with that's me awesome. and, and Lance here is always better than bed. Okay? Fuck bed. Hang out with <laughs> us. The only way it could possibly be better is if you could somehow listen to the podcast while dreaming about the podcast, while still commenting on the podcast. Oh, yeah. That's the only way it can get better. Otherwise, dude... You are yeah, on top of the mountain right now. Keep hanging. The crow keeps flying. Uh, <laughs> don't go nowhere. Normally, I'm actually against deleting hate comments. I just, I don't know. For the longest time, I saw that as like a weakness of someone, like as someone who like who can't take criticism. Right. But recently, I've understood that yeah, there is a good reason as to why you should delete hate comments. Like, say for example, if someone is outright harassing you, like a uh, like they like, say like they're threatening you or saying that you're a disgrace or something like that. Jesus Christ. Some people do like I've, I've talked to other writers, just like people on no sleep and stuff that have told me like some of the shit that people say to them when they don't like their story is like damn near on the level of like threatening their safety. Like I didn't like this. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to, I'm going to run you off the road when I see you. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> are you that freaking Hey, Banning Kruger entering those dreams. Damn, Wendingus. I wish I would have thought of that name. K Banning <laughs> Kruger. Freaking awesome. I got the best friends in the world. Um, but I mean, I think it also like I'd have to see what she means by hate comments, because I, I think that there are some comments that are just flat out just ridiculous. I mean, I've received some of them where it's just like I can't sleep and I can't eat because this is so terrible, it ruined my day. And I'm just like at what point in the freaking 10,000 word story did you decide to keep going when you were no longer able to sleep or eat because of it? Like, like if it was that horrible. Yeah, exactly. What about it just made you get so <laughs> irate, so <laughs> angry? You felt the need to, to make like make like empty threats towards the person who wrote it. And I say empty yeah. threats because they say that uh, they were threatened to do something to you when in fact, in reality is they have no idea who you are. So you imagine, you know, if that person was in like a jigsaw puzzle in the saw movies and, you know, they're just like, I hate this so much. And they're just grinding <laughs> their hand into the saw and, and, you know, the little guy on the, on the tricep comes out. It's like, you can stop now. You finished. You can pull your hand out. Like, no, I hate it so much. I hate you jigsaw. Oh God, I can't sleep. I can't eat. And they just like, that, that's what it is. Like I've clicked off of a lot of stories that I've read that I'll get the first few paragraphs in. And if it's, if I can tell it's not going to be something I like, I'll, I'll Jesus, I'll click on to the next one or whatever. I never understand that. They're just like, it killed me to read all of this. It was so miserable. And I'm like, then like, why the hell did you keep going? <laughs> did you think there was a pot yeah, of gold? Yeah, they wanted to see if it would get better a, at some point. Like, uh, a pot of gold, essentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, if somebody like wants, the, uh, if someone didn't like the story, like, they, they wanted to give it a chance to read it through the entire thing, and they wanted to give their thoughts on it. Like, that's fine. Like constructive criticism, you know. If they just say why they didn't like it, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're outright threatening someone just because they wrote something you didn't like, that's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and I've never been threatened. I don't know. Um, I don't. But I, like I said, I've talked to people. That have said like, yeah, people have flat out been you know, like threaten their threaten their safety because they didn't like their story. It's like Jesus Christ. Um, when Dingus tells me that I can have the name, she's gonna gift it to me. Thank you, thank you, K. Banning Kruger. I think that might be my my uh, Halloween October Twitter name. I might change it. How much longer is this gonna be? Blindfolded Soul asks. I don't know, Lance. How much longer you are running this show? I don't know. I want to keep going, man. I'm having a great time. Yeah. I am, I yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm going to roll until I can't roll no more. So, uh, <laughs> I'm I guess going around at the speed of sound. As long as you guys want to hear me flap my gums, I will keep <laughs> on for you. Hey, seeing see how you're now Freddy Krueger in a way, like you got to have a glove now. You got to go out and buy a glove and just like pose in a picture, make that your profile, you know? Maybe I just go as Freddy for Halloween. I don't know. I haven't. I, uh, I did that like for like Halloween two years back when I was a teenager. <laughs> it was great. 
Yeah, I'll be just, I'm K Ben and Kruger, guys. Do you <laughs> like shitty stories? Do you want to hear some more? This is it, K, your big break in TV. <laughs> I get up into the trolls' heads when they're sleeping, and it's like, you know, <laughs> one, two, Banning's coming to bring shit stories to you. And says, How you doing, guys? Are you <laughs> here, Jeff the Killer? The K Banning Kellum version? Speaking of blades, actually, you know that sword I got in my profile? Mm. Yeah. I, I so badly, like, I, that's officially going to be a part of my character now. Like, I'm actually hoping that one day I can get that sword custom made and I can, like, pose in photographs with it. And maybe one day I can actually sell replicas of that. I, I, uh, quick side note, I am going to start selling merch when I get the chance to. So yeah. hopefully you'll have Lance's creepy reading t-shirts. And I just need to get some artwork for the uh, for the shirts. I'll I mean, if anyone, if anyone wants to send me in some artwork to use for, for the material, then that's perfectly fine. Like, I'm totally open to that. Um, but yeah, merch yeah. will be coming eventually. Well, um, Matter of fact, Kay, you should start selling merch yourself. here is... One of the uh, most talented artists that I had the pleasure to know. Oh, really? So, um, no, I think that's if pretty you're interesting. Commissions or artsy type stuff. Uh, look no further. She is good, and when I say she is good, I mean she is damn good. And when I say she's damn good, I mean she is get damn good, as we say down here in Nolens. So check her out um, if you're looking for art support. And that goes to anybody else who's listening to this right now. Well, when Dingus, hopefully we can work together sometime. That'll be good. Um, that's right. No, you do those shout outs all the time, like on uh like, like when I was uh doing the little videos for the convention and stuff. I'm gonna bring those back. Just do like an impromptu, like, all right, folks, check it out. The K Ban and Kellum and Lance's creepy readings shout out of the night goes to the excruciatingly talented Wind Dingus. Check when her dingus. out. <laughs> check her out, you'll be glad. You did. She says that people uh, admit on No Sleep that they've downvoted news stories just to keep them from getting to the front page out of jealousy. Well, that's a fucking dick move. Anybody who does that. Mm. Well, that's quite a shame, though. That's such a shit thing to do, too. Especially, like, I think I was talking to you the other night, man, and I was saying, like, you know, to to fuck around with, like, indie artists, too. Like, folks like us who goddamn, like, go to work eight hours a day and shit or go to school all day and then come home and uh, still create and do it because we love to do it. Yeah. And to have people yeah, do yeah. shit like what Wendingus mentions here, like just downvoting crap just to fuck it over, like that is just such a sh like how small of a person do you have to be to be like, yeah, this person worked really hard and they gave it to everybody for free. Well, let's just hold on, boys, put on your pants and let's take a large meal at Arby's all over there. You know, <laughs> let's see here. We got some questions and comments. Uh, I'm a small channel. Okay, that's Dark Huntress. Go check out Dark Huntress. Um, Crowflies, kill them. Who are you on YouTube? Uh, I don't really have a YouTube, um, Crow. I, I mean, I do. I do have a YouTube channel, obviously. I have zero content on it. I, um, I want to I wanna start doing stuff, but I think it's stuff like this that I would excel at, like, you know, talking to, you know, doing podcasting and stuff like that. I don't think I could hey, Jack, solo... Hmm. Uh, my friend Jack Mockery's in here. Oh, cool! And I think I think yeah. my voice just cracked for a second. Oh God! <laughs> but I thank you for the sub. But anyway, um, if you guys want to get more uh, K Banning Kellum in your lives, follow me on Twitter at Banning K in nineteen seventy nine. Soulless is promotion. Soulless promotion. That is where I do the majority of my communicating with the world around me. So yeah, at Banning K nineteen seventy nine on Twitter. Give me a follow, please, and I'll love you for life. Um, let's see. But thank you for subbing Crow just the same. If I start doing stuff, I'd be glad to already have some people on there. Yeah, what have, what have you had in mind, actually, if, if you're going to upload something on your channel? Like, anything at all? I I don't know, man. Like, uh, not, like nothing. Nothing solo, like nothing, just me, like, you know, doing my own thing. Like I would have to 
like I said, this is the kind of stuff I like doing. So like podcasting would be something I would do and maybe just, you know, share those videos onto my channel to kind of build that content there. But I, I don't know. I mean, maybe something else, maybe, you know, maybe uh, inspiration will strike and I will come up with a cool YouTube channel idea for my YouTube channel. But, you know, for the time being, nah, man, like I said, I'm enjoying stuff like this. I like, I like yeah. uh, the getting out there and kind of talking with others in the community. So I want to do more of that. I talked to Spooky Boo. Um, oh, yeah, Spooky Boo. Yeah, she's cool people. Um, about coming on as a guest on her channel. So yeah, that's one thing I'm, I'm kind of just starting to venture into the YouTube side of the house. So anybody out there, if you want to, you want to work with me, if you can tolerate my voice, hit me up on Twitter at Banning K 1979. <laughs> and um, let's set something up. I'd love to come in and, uh, and hang out and grace your channel or disgrace <laughs> your channel. With my you voice. said, come in. Come. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I just I just feel like you, like you've been doing most of the talking tonight, and I just I've just been like nodding along and and, and agreeing, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Like, I haven't really been, been given much insight. Oh, granted, this is like in a way, it's kind of like an interview with you, uh, with what I've asked you. All right, I'm not trying to, to to hijack your your show too much there, man. So if you need me to shut up, by all means, you can just like <laughs> say, shut up. Let me talk. Here. No, and it's it's fun, man. It's, it's really interesting to hear what you have to say on certain things. Kill, kill. Well, you want to hear um, more? I will mention at least one more thing about Jeff the Killer 2015. Like, I like how you made Jeff's downfall. Like, he gradually just went down, like from like mentally and psychologically. Like, it didn't, it didn't like happen like instantaneously when he was like burned alive, and you like you like, kept like the bleach out of the whole thing. Like, thank God for that. But you had him get shot in the face with a flare gun. Like, what was the the inspiration behind that? Basically, like to change Jeff's appearance. The flare gun and the appearance, right? Well, the appearance change would, of course, be a byproduct of how he was injured. Um, I wanted to find a realistic way that, for because for one, I, I had to take the evil down in Randy and Keith and Troy. Because the idea that these teenage kids from this affluent neighborhood would just be complete murderous psychopaths with skateboards and guns and knives and stuff was just way too out there for me to work with. So I had to bring them into the realm of, of reality. Um, and I, I tried to think like, okay, yes, kids find their parents' guns and stuff. That's pretty common. But if Jeff were to get shot in the face, the guy, he'd probably die. So I'm like, what could work? And that's why I was like, oh, a flare gun. Like, what if, you know, and that's something that would make sense for like, you know, like a bored kid like Randy to find and, you know, mess around with, you know, so... And then I'm also thinking to myself, like, the idea was for Randy to kind of point it at Jeff and, you know, hold him there to get beat up. And I'm like, having him hold Jeff at gunpoint with a real gun is a little bit over the top. Aiming a flare gun at somebody, I guess, if, if Randy was familiar with it, you know, if his dad had taught him how to shoot it, he might know that it likely wouldn't be fatal. So he would have more, you know, um, he, he, he would not be as hesitant to you know, pointed at somebody because, you know, worst case scenario, he wounds him maybe. Yeah. Um, even though, even in the story talk, I, I do make sure to mention that, you know, Randy would not have actually fired, you know, he didn't want to actually fire. He kind of, it was kind of like Randy just got in too deep. Too uh, when Dingus, thank you for following me on Twitter. Huh? Uh, when Dingus just said that she followed me on Twitter. So thank you. I followed you back. You are a lucky man to get a Wendingus follow. Okay. Mm, feels good. The crow says, Kellum, you are an author. Nice. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Crow. I am. Um, but yeah, I wanted to keep that in the realm of, of reasonable. And I also, I didn't want Randy and Keith and Troy to just be like these complete, like, irredeemable psychopaths. They were just supposed to be spoiled kids who thought they were above the rules because, you know, their parents' money and stuff. That kept <laughs> in other them words, up. screw the rules. I have money. <laughs> exactly. They were just yeah. like, like, yeah, there's a bridge people. for you. That was a Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge yeah. reference, by the way. <laughs> so that that was kind of the thing there. So I went with the flare gun idea. Um, plus, that's a more realistic way for somebody to get disfigured than, you know, uh, bleach and, and alcohol. Yeah. Um, the Crow asks, can I ask you permission to narrate your stories? Yes, you certainly may. Narrate whichever ones that you like. Um, 
and uh, just let me know. Hit me up when they are done, so I can enjoy. Um, so I can enjoy your your efforts. But yes, um, have at them. They are they are up for grabs. Uh, <laughs> but so yeah. So that's but I'm first for Universal Blackout. Yes, I'm waiting for somebody to read that one. For yes, yeah, it'll, like it'll be that. me, man. I'm calling dibs on it right now. Okay, good. Universal Blast. That was one of my most recent ones. Um, yeah. So get at that. And Hoy Rod is also in need of uh, some narrating love there. So anybody who wants to go click on that bad boy, give it a go. But yeah, I admit the flare gun thing was a really nice touch and how Jeff was like mentally and psychologically abused by his parents. Like I'm glad you didn't go for like the typical um, alcoholic father who beats his kids on a daily basis. Like some stories do like Tiki yeah. Tony and laughing or origin of laughing Jack. Well, yeah, because I wanted to go with something that would not, that once again would remain in that realm of reality. I mean, if you go with the drunken, you know, father beating the kids, you know, then you have to explain how Jeff is going to school every day with black eyes or something, and then nobody's investigating the parents. Or you have to explain how, you know, why the mom stays with the dad and and things like that. So. The fact, and the thing is, so many people have trolled that story by going, "Oh, the parents are so unrealistic. Parents don't act like that." I actually, base the parents off of, uh, of course, it's an exaggerated, uh, you know, concept to a degree. But yeah, I mean, I grew up in an almost similar own, situation. Off of friends, I, I had a couple of friends in high school, and their parents are, and the, the Jeff parents are kind of a composite of a couple of different you know, mom and dads that I met when I would go spend the night over at, you know, these kids' houses when I was in high school or whatever. And I've seen that kind of parenting, that that um, the trophy collector dad, you know, that's just like, you got to win. You got to win all the time. You got to always be winning. You know, I've seen that kind of parent. I've seen this super image obsessed parent, the whole like, you don't. No, you won't, Jack. Good. No, you won't, Jack. I'm going to I'm going to beat you to it, man. Mark my words. <laughs> Uh oh, I'm missing stuff. What is this? Profiles too late, Lance. I'm already narrating it as we speak. Oh, oh it's on now. It's on now. Oh, uh, he's quick. It's already working on it. The crow go has forward. flown. That is it. Well, he is. A, he does go as the crow flies, and that is the fastest path. So he might beat you. <laughs> hey, crow! I got a sword. What do you got? Jack Mockery says uh, that and abusive parents are very cliche in order to Yes, they are. It's a. It's kind of a cheap. It's kind of a cheap way to get quick sympathy for, you know, whoever the emerging, you know, character is that, that comes from the abuse. It's like, oh, well, you know, yeah, he's going out there stabbing a thousand people, but his parents were real pricks to him. So, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of an easy way to do that. Um, so, yes, I wanted to go with a slightly less overly done concept of bad parents. So instead of the abusive alcoholic parents, I went with the – emotionally image obsessed neglectful parents because yeah. you know that and they're also slightly more redeemable i always try to keep that option there because there, there may come a time when you when you might want to make your bad guy a decent guy you know if you look at buffy the vampire slayer you know you wouldn't have angel or spike had the writers not given those two characters redeemable mm-hmm. qualities and I just totally dropped Buffy stuff, so you guys can feel free to <laughs> all you want. I liked the show. Don't care what you think. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. No worries. But yeah, it was a good idea. A nice little change up to what we normally see from uh, killer characters. With all the copycat ca- uh, sorry, copycat killer characters. Wow, that's a mouthful. Try saying yeah, that three yeah. times fast. Uh, <laughs> Like they always, they always go for the typical like abusive father type situation, and it just feels so cliche. It's so unoriginal, and really like um, the stories by themselves are pretty are written written really badly. So in the end, I don't really feel anything for those characters that they made up, and more often than not, they they try to squeeze in Jeff the Killer in some form or fashion into the story, whether it be a reference or they have him actually appear in the story, like with Nina Nina the Killer. Who was, who was like a Jeff fangirl. Right, right. And you implemented that into your stories. Like, that was pretty pretty funny in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> and actually, I, and my, I, I tweeted Nina, you out saying, I fucking called it, man. <laughs> my Nina character, she is um, definitely not written in the uh, traditional Nina the Killer format. So if you 
when you get to the disturbingly cruel, which is the chapter that features Nina, don't automatically hate it, please. Like, give it a chance, read it. Um, because I definitely tried to go with a more realistic Nina. And to be fair, it's kind of good to, that you did. So, yeah, rock on, man. But um, actually, the story, I'm, the, the one I'm writing right now, the installment I'm writing at the moment for it is a Nina chapter again. Oh, wow. So <laughs> lots of Nina going on around Cha. I have to ask, though, uh, what was your intention behind like making Jeff and Lou like the opposite of what they were in the original story? Basically how Lou was the older brother, and now all of a sudden in this remake, it's Jeff who's the older brother? Like, What was the idea I behind just, that? Because that's the way I automatically pictured it the first time I read through it. I don't know if I skimmed the part where Lou was older and Jeff was younger, but my mind automatically went to Jeff being the older brother and Lou being the younger brother when I read the first um, Jeff, you know, the original Jeff. And I just always that just always seemed better to me. That was kind of stuck more to me. So that was that was kind of just it. That just felt more just felt better writing it. Yeah, initially I was really confused when I heard that that part. Uh when Jeff and Lou were just basically uh like where Jeff was, like, was Jeff was older and Lou was younger. Like that was a little off putting at first because I was pictured like Lou being older. But since then I've rather adapted like uh, very, very kindly to Lou being the younger sibling, and it and it kind of fits that way. It, it would make sense as to how, as to why Jeff is the older sibling because he's more more stable. Well, yeah. rather he used to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what led to Jeff's insanity, you know, or eventual breakdown was the fact that he was trying to take on a big brother slash fatherly role to Lou, and also he still wanted his parents to love him he still wanted that's what people don't get about it you know they're just like well i don't understand how that made him snap it's just, it's just all the little things you know the little things add up you know that's what you know it's not like somebody i didn't want to go with some crazy concept oh, like, uh, you know, hang on hang on hang on um, i gotta mute myself for a second uh give me a second okay i guess i am uh i guess i'm running the show at the moment it is the welcome to the k ban and kellum channel everybody uh, and until lance comes back anyway um it is all K banning all the time. So please remember it is banning K 1979 on Twitter. Follow, 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 follow all day long when you eat at Ben's Burgers. And um, that, is, that is all I got. Send me your questions, guys. And I will send you. Okay, here answer. I am. Ah, he's back. Yeah, my sister was being a little loud. So I want, I'll make sure no one else heard, it, heard her in the background. I took over your channel for a few minutes there, man. Sorry. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, all my stuff is going to go to you now. <laughs> um, what was I saying, though? Oh, yeah. So it's just like the little things that made Jeff snap in my version. It wasn't, I didn't want to go with this concept of like the Joker, like if you, if you ever like um, saw his, one of his many backstories, you know, that he falls into this vat of chemicals and he comes out. The, like the idea that somebody wakes up on Monday morning and they're perfectly sane and something really shitty happens to him Monday afternoon. And then they go to bed crazy Monday night. I never liked that idea. You know, I like the fact that I could create this Jeff character that is struggling against against his urges. He doesn't want to be crazy. He doesn't want to be a killer. He didn't, he, did, he didn't want to be Jeff the killer. You know, he didn't like the idea that he enjoyed beating up Keith and Randy and Troy. He didn't. He liked it, but he didn't like it. He liked it in the same way that a heroin addict who's trying to get off of heroin likes being on heroin it's like yeah it feels really good to them but at the same time they're like god damn it i just wish i didn't need heroin you know that was jeff you know he didn't want he didn't want to hurt anybody he just wanted to be a big brother and a son and and you know that's all he wanted um so he, he was fighting it the whole thing but eventually like he just kept getting shit on it was like first they had to move and he hated that and of course then there's a ton of unseen crap you know from his childhood that you don't know um, but I try to make it implied that he had been dealing with this. And, um, you know, so then he, then he, then there's the move and then he goes and he, he ends up meeting with, you know, Keith and Troy and Randy in the parking lot. He doesn't want to fight him. He's like, I don't want to fight you guys. And they just keep pushing and keep pushing. And then, then he runs, then he winds up with the crooked cop and he's like watching his parents sit there and, you know, he knows they yeah. know. I will say it was a good, it was a good, uh, idea to have you mention that they were basically just doing it in self-defense how in the original story they didn't do anything like that even though it was clearly self-defense right well the original story also has like the cops like 
pull their guns on Lou immediately and yeah, sentence exactly. him to juvie without him ever seeing a judge. Yeah, exactly. Well, got, what's up with that? It's kangaroo court, baby. They just, <laughs> just like, you know what? Why we don't what need does that judges. tell us? We don't need judges and juries. The cops will decide your fucking sentence right on the spot. Exactly. Two years in juvie for everything. <laughs> um, but I tried to keep like the bones of the original story because that was part of the contest. A lot of people are always like, I don't know why you made this rewrite. It's just like, it's, it's the same stuff from the, it's like, well, that was the. Well, well do you not know what a remake is? That's yeah, essentially yeah. what a remake is defined as. You're remaking something yeah, it, from it an original a, concept. It wasn't a spinoff. It wasn't a fanfic. It was a remastering of the core story. So of course, yes, you still, people are like, well, I don't know why you had to keep Jeff a teenager. Teenagers aren't scary, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, because he was a fucking teenager in the original. It wouldn't have been a exactly. proper remake. If it's I like, don't think you were really trying to make Jeff scary, per se. Uh -uh. You were basically trying to tell a story of a kid who basically has a big downfall. Exactly. And that's ultimately the, the, the crux or whatever the word for it is behind Jeff snapping is he could not control anything around him. And he finally, the only way he could find control was to give up all attempts at control and that's when he, he becomes the killer because he tried to control his feelings about the move he tried to be happy about it and he couldn't he tried to control the situation with randy and keith and troy through friendly banter and sarcasm and wit and whatever and they wouldn't allow that to happen they forced him to fight you know he tried to explain to the cop what went on and the cop was corrupt Right, right. You explained some. You told me that some people were not satisfied with the way the cop had taken, oh my, uh, Randy Sider or whatever it was. No, the guy that. Oh my God! Um, God bless the bad creepy pasta crew. They 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 have their funny moments, but like yeah. I said, I was telling you this. I don't know if they did this on purpose or if they just really missed the mark on it on the writing. But they were like, the I'm like part hey, where guys, I love you guys so much. I really do. You guys are awesome. But honestly, with this one story you guys read, I honestly flat out do not agree with you at all because you guys just missed so many key points and elements and concepts of the story. You guys just didn't know what you were ranting on, essentially. Like a lot of stuff you guys were, were bickering about could easily be solved if you looked into the story and actually uh, realized well, what was going on. I felt like when I listened to it, I just felt like they were intentionally missing, like they were being in intentionally obtuse, to quote um, the Shawshank Redemption. Um, <laughs> I, I felt like they were being intentionally obtuse. I feel like they knew that when the cop was like, oh, you didn't lock up your bikes. So... Was it? Wait, I'd fight Jeff in the street. I thought, street that was obvious. No <laughs> sorry, I thought sorry. it was obvious that the cop was crooked. <laughs> you know, like, of course, not locking up your brother. bike. Huh? Uh, Swamp Dweller, he replied... Um, I'd fight Jeff in the street with no socks on. You know what, awesome. man? That's great, man. That way, if you end up losing, he can't say that I've knocked your socks off. Damn straight. Oh, my God. That's good. That's good. He can you're, say breaking dish, you're breaking say dishes that. right over there? No, I'm sorry. I'm banging and clanging stuff around. Hold on. Let me get re-situated here. Sometimes remakes don't work. Cough, Fantastic Four. Yes. <laughs> Dark Huntress, I agree. I agree. Oh, I got to catch up on comments. Yes, I, I went outside on the porch I was talking to. Oh, yeah. Her. She also asked, uh, would you collab with this, with a very small channel? Are, are she asking me that question? I mean, if so, then, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I like collabing with small channels. It's pretty fun. Let's see. I'm trying to catch up, see if there's any questions. I need you think to Jeff would win? Um, I don't know. I mean... I, I don't know you personally, Swamp Dweller. I mean, we've talked like via Twitter sometimes, but I don't know if you, I mean, you know any martial arts? Can you box? Do you know how to use a sword or anything like that? Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm trying to catch hey, up. Hey, if you want to learn how to use a sword, I can teach you, man. I can teach you. Crowflies asked me, uh, hey, Banning, you said Hoyt Rod needs a narrated. Yes, it does. Feel free. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. Doc Hunter says, Kangaroo Court, I haven't heard that since my senior year of high school. Well, congratulations. I'm glad I could bring it back. Swamp Dweller, I'd, oh, oh, there it is. I'd fight Jeff and shoot no socks. That damn right, Swamp. Get him. Eli, would Jeff come back stronger if he comes back? I think he's going to probably, I don't know. I don't know. But there's, there's a few stories out before, I, before we get back to Jeff. We'll see. 
Uh, oh, Dark Huntress was asking me if I would collaborate. Absolutely. <laughs> um, hit me up. And I think I'm caught up on questions. Awesome. What's this? He dwells in the swamp. Dude wrestles gators, gators for fun. Wait, wait, one day I will read Jeff the Killer and be a cool kid. Yes, Swamp Dweller. Yes, you will be. But I think you're referring to the original story. I mean, if so, then go right, go all for it, man. In fact, I'm going to read the original story one day, but I have a reason as to why I am. And it's not because I'm reason I'm going to be reading the remake. It's for this upcoming series or saga that I uh, plan I plan on doing. Much to my own dismay. Let's see here. Yeah, she followed you on Twitter. Awesome. You guys keep it up. I follow on Twitter. Okay, thank you, Dark Huntress. I appreciate the heck out of it. I will um, subscribe to Dark Huntress. She's been a really good sport. I will follow. Yeah, she's been hanging in on this. I will definitely click her back on Twitter. I'll follow her back. Hit me up in the DMs. Um, Dark Huntress, if you want to work or if you want to discuss collaborations and um, things of that nature. Or you guys can email me at bannonk1979 at gmail.com um, with any questions about collabs story readings this that or the other yeah um, hit me we, up. we agreed you're gonna be making a cameo in my one of my jeff stories re, jeff readings right that's the plan that is the that's plan. the plan stan hitchcock the shit out of that thing <laughs> i always like it whenever an author like appears in their own story like i know snuff bomb did it with the origin of laughing jack with mcp a while back and that's that's always been really interesting to me i always want to see an author make some appearance in some form or another, whether it really be a cameo or a, a large character role, like anything at all. If they can make an appearance in it, then that's fantastic. I love it's it. King, you know, makes an appearance in all of his movies. Stan well, not Lee. all of them. He didn't make an appearance in The Green Mile. Did he not? No. Maybe not. That's a shame. The Green Mile was like really was like really emotional. I read the book before yeah. the seeing the movie, and oh, man, it was so sad. I think because it was supposed to be so serious, yeah, he didn't even want to like break that fourth wall with it by – People being like, oh, there's Stephen King, the guy who wrote it. And I think he wanted to really immerse that audience. Yeah. <laughs> so even, even a cameo at that point would have been kind of, you know, uh, I don't think he appeared in Shawshank Redemption either. Maybe. I, I don't know. But we just got like really sidetracked. What were we talking about with the Jeff you know, story? Like Jeff the killer and the remake and the uh, him sliding into insanity and the process by which he went crazy. <laughs> Good night, Crow Files. It's great having you here. Yeah, Crow Flies, man. You'd be good. Thank you for hanging out with us. Wait, did I say Crow Files or Crow Flies? He is the both. He both is the crow that flies, and he is the Crow Files. <laughs> that can be like a little side thing he does on his channel. Let's see. Any more questions? Any more questions? Let's see. Banning, collab with Cleric and I. We're making horror story books for preschoolers. Oh, we're reading that at the same time. Okay, I'm in. Uh, hey, small world. <laughs> when Dingus, you've got, you know, shoot me some information. Um, I'm going to slide into your DMs. I, I am all for that. Um, we're making story, uh, making horror stories for preschoolers. Yeah. I don't know if I could, that, that would be hard to. <laughs> I, I, that would be hard to write. Um, a horror book for preschoolers. Like one day, little Jimmy started playing with his blocks. And he started spelling <laughs> a word. Bro. And it spelled bad. And he knocked the blocks down. And then it spelled sad. <laughs> and he threw them in his toy box. But he looked down in there. And they bounced around. And they spelled mad. <laughs> the end. You know, you could possibly make a creepypasta based off that. Make a creepypasta based off of anything, man. I swear to God, dude. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just thinking about stuff, and I'm like, yeah. like, I've always wanted to make a troll pasta for The Office. You watch The Office? Ah, um, uh, no, I haven't, but I know all about the memes. Oh my God! So in my story, The Unkillable Kenny Leonard, I actually did open up with a Office dot exe story, but it was written as part of the rest of the story but i've always wanted to do a standalone like the office pam's revenge so, like, wait, michael wait, scott wait. arrives to work one day <laughs> currently commissioning he's not behind the reception desk <laughs> wait kate can i stop you for a second you can stop me forever please don't say it like that snap my neck <laughs> But no, Swamp Diller saying currently commissioning Wendig Wendingus for 
a Swamp Dweller X Lance fanfic in the Shrek 2 setting. Damn straight. <laughs> oh. Make it happen, Wendy. You know what? I'm all for it, man. I mean, make it better than seeing, than seeing a sword go inside, a, go inside a Swamp Dweller. Then his mommy said he was grounded, so says Dark Huntress. Thank you. She just wrote she's, she's a dream spoiler. <laughs> she gave the spoiler away to Jimmy's bad day. Thanks a lot. The audience wasn't supposed to know he got grounded yet. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I'm having a great time. Are you are you okay? I am always having a great time in the realm of Lance Reed's the creepiness, man. Come on. And K. Bennington, kill him for the win, kill him. We got the coolest folks in the world here. We got the crow. We got Wendingus. We got the swamp devil. We got not just a huntress, but a dark huntress. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I could not ask for anything. I mean, the only way this could be better is if it was taking place in an opium bar and we we're just all hanging out, man. You know, no, no, no. Get me all go to, go to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's all wings the wings are my shit, man. Uh, Lance loves him some hot wings. I had hot wings today, matter of fact. Oh, right? you lucky bastard. Actually, I think Buffalo Wild Wings might still be open at this hour. Like, I'm, maybe I'll go down there and get some wings. Yeah, go get you some wings. I mean, they're open like they're open like pretty late anyway. So maybe after the stream, or maybe sometime after the stream, I can just head on out and just it, get man. my go. get my blaze on. Get your wings, dangs, and things, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that was though just kind of circle back around, man. The, slow slide of insanity of jeff woods um yeah like i said i wanted to keep it realistic as possible within a horror story which is not always completely possible because it's a freaking horror story like you always got to have something you know um kind of you know like i said there's got to be that suspension of discipline i mean you got to kind of step outside the box i mean if you were to try to make a horror story out of just completely mundane stuff i mean i don't know like you'd always you're always gonna have to stretch a little bit you know, I was at the DMV and the line was really long. The end. Like that's not good, you know. So, uh, but I tried. I tried to avoid the things that cause the original story to get deleted, like the thing of bleach and you know, skateboarding over fences with you know thirteen year olds with handguns and. <laughs> no, 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 no. Only, only Randy and uh, Keith jumped over the fence. Troy just crashed into the railing because he's fat. <laughs> he just came on through like, he was busted on through like the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> no, no, maybe like they're just running. Oh, yeah. on, they're all running on like yeah. one skateboard and they like go over a ramp, Tony Hawk style, and they're just like, like whoa. Oh, see, here we go. The Maniacs. How are you doing, the Maniacs? Okay, I got a question for Kellum or Mr. K, whoever you like. How would you do a Freddy Krueger creepypasta if there was one? Well, oh, wow. A Freddy Krueger creepypasta. That's a damn good question because I love me some Freddy Krueger. Well, one day. If they made like a movie of Jeff the Killer, your version, it would be like, this is it, Caleb. Your big break in TV. That's right. One day. <laughs> Little this this well, it would be Jimmy from the block story grown up after his mom <laughs> him, he, got it back. he oh, sits yeah. down at his computer one day and it just starts typing one two Freddy's coming for you and it's like I didn't type that you know it's, it's a creepy pasta <laughs> would have to be like first person of course I was like I didn't type that I didn't know what happened why did I pick up that thumb drive off the ground that had a picture of an upside down cross on it oh of course because when I picked it up it was flipped over I thought it was a regular cross. <laughs> oh, was I ever wrong? And, uh, you know, then the guy gets an email, and it's like I opened my email, and it was a picture of Freddy Krueger, and he said, 3-4, you better lock your door. And, oh, shit, I forgot to lock my door, and now he's inside, and he stabbed me, and I'm dead, and guess what? It was you. The end. You forgot 5-6, grab your crucifix. And then a skeleton popped out. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Spooky, scary skeletons come shivering down your spine. Why people are so scared of skeletons? I mean, like they, I just don't know. Like I don't know. They're, they're essentially what you are, but with skin over I them. Know. I am a skeleton. We're all skeletons. Deep down, we're all skeletons on the inside. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Just big old bone, white, smiling, eyeless fiends. <laughs> hey, Lance, what do you think of the Lavender Town creepypasta? I like it. It's pretty good. I'm not a Pokemon fan, to be honest, but the Lavender, Lavender Town creepypasta, I actually do find myself enjoying. And I do admit the Lavender Town theme music is pretty spooky when you first hear it. 
And I remember a while back, I did read uh, Pokemon Black, but it was so bad, and I was having audio troubles that day. But I uploaded it anyways, but now I regret doing that. So I deleted it, and I plan on remaking it, along with some of my older videos, because a lot of them are pretty bad. Even this one video, this one narration I made of one of Shadow Swimmer 7 7 stories, like, he, he liked it, but a while back, like a few years later, I'm like, this is so cringy. I can't, I can't take this. I'm going to just redo them. I'll keep them up just for nostalgic purposes, but I'll, I'll redo them in, in due time. The maniac says, weirdly, Mr. K, you can just call me banning. Really? Mr. Is my dad's name. When he writes, <laughs> I'm picturing it in my head. Okay. Well, you know what? If you want to, if you want to write that one there, you can have Freddy.exe, whatever. And, uh, you know, you can just be, like, inspired by the shit-talking of k Ban and Kellum. When Dingus says she, she's writing a Smash Mouth soundtrack. And Swamp Dola, <laughs> Swamp Dola replied, hey, now, Swamp and Lance now, Dicks and Swords, yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> when Dingus says, I'm more afraid of skin and the meats than the skellies. This is why I love when Dingus, because she said skellies, and I love that. <laughs> oh, speaking of Swamp Dola, he's I mentioned that he's actually going to be in Jeff the Killer 2015, right? Oh, yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Did. He's going to be Officer Williamson. Well, you know, I will tell you, um, you know, Wendingus, if you're in here, Dark Huntress, if you're in here, I don't know uh, who may not. You all know you're still looking for a female voice. So give me two seconds. I have to step out. Um, discuss, because I know you're trying to find somebody for Jeff's mom, right? Yeah. Who wants to be Jeff's mom? <laughs> I think that's up to me in the end. Like, I got to see if their voice matches and if they actually give a good performance. Like I'm a little, I'm I'm treating this like it's a movie, like I'm a director in a in a way. Okay, you still with him? With me? Did you walk away somewhere? Oh yeah, I see. I was gonna step out. Am I, Lance? Of course you are, Swamp Dweller. I'm offended. It's not, a... dude. I messaged you and told you about this. You even sent me your audio already, man. What are you talking about? All right, I am back. Let's... I'll be her mom. Okay, thank you. I don't know, Dark Huntress. I'm still trying. I've ha I've had some thoughts in my head as to who should play Jeff's mom, but I got to get in contact with them first. <laughs> I want to be the mom. Swamp, 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 swamp. I I, I hate to break it to you, but uh, you're kind of, you know, a dude. Oh, Steve Gray did it. Remember? Gray. Don't do it, Chief. <laughs> Don't do it, Chief. It's too risky. Steve Gray is an talented but they should have had... He Jeff. Is, he does not have a good voice for a female. Jeff the Killer by K. Benning Kellum. Hey, he did a fantastic job. By Steve him. Gray. Steve Gray is 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 amazing really? at what he does. Let's <laughs> see here. Pokemon Creepy Pastas. You know, that was actually one of the first ones that I actually read was one of the Pokemon ones. In fact, I found Creepy Pasta Wiki looking for Pokemon um cheats and crap like that. <laughs> I mention it. Autumn Ivy narrated a long story in mind. She's amazing. Yes, Autumn Ivy is somebody definitely worth uh, reaching out to, um, Lance. Uh, all right. I mean, I'll, I'll take a look at her. Yeah. Um, she's got. She's really talented at um, narrations, and you know, she's she's good at what she does. You can definitely um, trust her to do a to exceed expectations. Yeah, weirdly enough, with, the, with how public I've made the mega collab for Jeff the Killer, I, I've gotten no one requesting to be the voice of Jeff. And this was before well, I made the announcement that I was going to do it. Going to be doing it. It's like if it's your channel, you're going to be the star. For God's sake! Like, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess there's a possibility that you wouldn't be that you'd be like one of those really like, no, I don't even want to start it. I just want it on my no. God damn it! If it's my channel, I'm going to be Jeff. All right. I'm going to be Jeff, and you guys can't stop me. I am Jeff the Killer. And it's kind of like I feel like if Dustin Diamond were to remake, you know, Saved by the Bell, he would probably play Zach. You know, he'd be like, I'm going <laughs> to be Zach. You know, I can't imagine he would go back and be Screech. So, yeah, if it's your channel, dude, you get to be Jeff. You get to be the Zach of Creepypasta. <laughs> the Zach Morris of Creepypasta. Jeff the Killer. Yeah, baby. 
<laughs> I like the sound of that. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, you, you got an awesome comment section here. Some, some... I'm glad. I'm glad they're really, they're really great. They're really great people. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate everybody who's come by tonight. You guys have made this. I, I may be a small narration channel, but you guys really make it worth it. You really do. We all started out small. When I wrote Secret Bar, man, I was just some joker on Creepypasta Wiki with a weird screen name and no idea how to format using wiki coding. And, you know, thank God it didn't get deleted for being a wall of text the first night I posted it. And, uh, <laughs> I actually had time to go back in and figure out how to edit and be like, oh, shit, that's how you make it. And don't forget to proofread, kids. Whenever you write a story, proofread. And if you want me to read your work, proofread. I cannot stress that enough. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what I always tell people. And, you know, we've gotten we've gotten criticism in the past on the creepy Creepypasta Wiki. Like, oh, you guys delete stories. Oh, God. Oh, oh. You know, if they're not up to your standards, it's like, no, we ask that you freaking try. All right. Listen, we love writers. We want everybody to come and write and Fill our wiki with great horror stories. We don't expect Stephen King level writing, but for God's sake, if you fuck up the title and still leave it posted, you're not giving a shit, Chief. Like if you if you have a in an unintentional typo in the freaking title, and you're content to leave that shit, it's gonna get deleted. For God's sake. And that's usually how you can tell the ones that are going to get deleted. Like you look at the title and half the shits that, that should be capitalized is lowercase or vice versa. Or there's just blatant freaking typos within the title itself. It's like, yeah, I think it's going to get deleted. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. When I asked, completely agree. When Dingus asked me that, if I was ever going to do a, another uh, reboot, what would I do? You should reboot Who's Isles. Daddy and what does he do? Um, <laughs> what would I... What else would I do? I mean, I don't know how much more trolling fucking vitriolic comment sections I can take, man. So I don't know. And Jeff already, you know, put me behind the eight ball in that category. Um, what would I like to take a shot at though that's out there mm. no you're quoting steam tams dark voices why sorry i don't i don't really because you know the jeff thing was kind of like a it was kind of like its own little project for just that purpose of challenging myself i've never really had a huge desire to remake other people's works jeff just was in the right place at the right time if it had never been deleted if the original had never been deleted off of the wiki i would not have sat there and been like i want to take a crack at jeff the killer i would have just let it be you know but because it was removed i wanted to see if i could and ultimately it's kind of like putting your money where your mouth is because like i said i was one of the people that voted the story to be removed and um you know, like people always say, what do you think you can do better? And I was finally like, well, you know what? God damn it, I do. And uh, hold my beer. I need both hands to type as I do better. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't I don't really know. Um, I would have to really think about that. Um, maybe. And, and the thing is, like, to reboot would not be to imply that I – because a lot of the stories that I really love that are classics – I wouldn't want to reboot them in order to try to improve anything about them. I would uh, maybe like something like the disappearance of Ashley Kansas, which is one of my all time favorite creepy pastas. I might would love to write a sequel to it or something like that. Um, or a prequel as to how the town ended up doing what it did. Um, but I don't know. That's a good question. Wendingus. I will think on that. Um, I will write Neglected by Viacom, the story of the, I don't know. <laughs> no, that sounds too similar to Abandoned by Disney. The Sepia Inverted SpongeBob. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, I think at this point we've rambled on just enough about Jeff the Killer. How about we start talking about 
other creepypastas. Yes, let's. What do you guys in the comments section? What, anybody want to talk? Want us to talk about any particular creepy pastas, or do you want us to just ramble? On I think I'll start off by saying what my favorite creepy pasta of all time is. Let's hear. Ben drowned. Really? Ben drowned. Yeah. See, here's how I first got into creepy pasta. I was watching a Zelda YouTube abridger by the name of Zeno Uzumaki. And I've been a fan of his content for years, and he had made a Ben Drown reference in one of his episodes. And I keep seeing comment sections about talking about Ben, and I, I'm i like, who's this Ben guy? What's going on? And so I leave a comment, and this is on an old YouTube channel I used to have, not my current one. It got deleted, which I'm glad it did, because, oh, man, I'm, my videos on that channel were so bad. But I'm getting off topic. <laughs> um, well, Eli, good night, man. If you can hang in there, do so. If you got to sleep, though, brother. Good night, Eli. Thank you so much for stopping by, though. You've been awesome. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so I left a comment saying, what's Ben? I don't know what's going on. What are you guys talking about? And someone told me about the whole story about Ben. Well, not the whole story, but a basic, like, small synopsis of Ben Drown. A guy buys a Majora's Mask cartridge, and it, it's haunted. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I type it into my computer or my phone, excuse me, and I see, on, I see it's on the Creepypasta Wiki. So I click on it, and I read through the entire thing, becoming interested in it as I went along and a little creeped out. I'm like, this is really good. Like, wow, this is really compelling. And so after I finish it, I'm like, oh my God, this was amazing. I love it. I want to, I want to see some more. And so I started binge watch or sorry, binge reading all these stories that were on the wiki. And I'm like, this is really good. This is really interesting. I wonder, I wonder how I can make my own. And I thought about that at one point, but I never got around to it. And then years later, <laughs> this is basically like an origin story for my channel, essentially. Like, if you guys have seen Darkness Tales, he made a video promoting me where he did talk about how I became so interested in horror to begin with. And with Creepypasta, I discovered them back when I was like maybe 16 or 17. And it was by Creepstick Pasta. And the first uh, narration video I saw by him was Barbie Doll, which was really cool to me. I liked it. I thought it was really awesome. And so I started binge watching a lot of his stuff and then binge reading more stories. And I just fell in love with it. It was great. I, I thought it was intriguing. And then years later, I just decided to start doing them myself. And oh, here I am. But as time went on, as I kept reading more of these stories, I ended up liking a lot more than like, say, for example, um, my, my second favorite one to this day has always been No End House. No End House to me was spectacular. The mere concept of it was intriguing. Like, a house that is supposedly, well, not really, I don't know if they said it was haunted in the story, I don't know, but it was a contest, basically. You had to go through all nine rooms to win $500, right? And the main character, David, goes there, right? Right? He does the challenges to go through no one house, and as he go, goes on, and each door go, gets increasingly more terrifying, like how the first door starts off as like childish and not scary at all. Then by room nine, everything just progressively gets darker and darker and darker and more terrifying. Like, that was great. I loved it. And the way it ended on a cliffhanger, like, I... Okay, normally I'm against cliffhangers when it comes to stories because you never know if there could be a sequel to any of them. But with No End House, I would have would have been perfectly fine if the story just ended on the cliffhanger right there and we never found out what happened. But sequels came, and while they were good, I just don't think they were, they were as good as, well, the first story. But that's just me, though. So, yes, Ben Drown and No End House are some of my favorites. I would say my... The first one I read, which was one of the first ones I read, that gave me a case of the full body tingly dinglies and, um, <laughs> you know, left me feeling really hinky do was well, a little short one called Piggyback, which is on the Creepypasta wiki still. I highly suggest you look it up. Very short, very sweet, blew me away. I was like, whoa, that was fucking good. Whoa. Is this really for free? Okay, click next story. What we got here? Then I got the disappearance of Ashley, Kansas, which once again, I was like, I can't believe they're just letting people read these for free. This is good. This is good stuff. And um, then it was, oh, God, this is one I admit that I fucking love. And I don't care what anybody says. I read the entire Happy Happy shit, and I enjoyed every second of it. Not because, oh, wow. <laughs> not because it was scary. Or like, oh, geez, no, not happy, happy. He's going to come and kill me with his happiness. No, it was just enjoyable in the same way that flipping Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is, you know, fun to watch. Or 
you know, whatever else, uh, killer clowns from outer space. You know, it had that quality to it. I was like, yeah, it's silly and it's it's goofy. And whether or not the guy, the writer intended for it to be serious and or not, it's still, I still enjoyed it. So, you know what? I put Happy Happy up there, man. You can say whatever you want about it. I enjoyed it, and that's all that fucking matters, man. You know, I say a good meal is a good meal, whether you get it from McDonald's or whether you get it from Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> if you enjoy the meal and you're content with a full belly at the end, then you ate well. Yeah. No worries, man. And, hey, I'm one of the minority of people who actually likes Laughing Jack. Like, Snoop Bomb has admitted that his story is not good or poorly written or whatever. And that's fine. I mean, that's perfectly fine if an author agrees that their story isn't good. But me, I honestly enjoyed it. I got a kick out of it. I mean, yeah, it has its issues, but I think it's a good read nonetheless. Even the origin story, which honestly back in the day did terrify me. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever had a creepy pasta scare me. Now, keep in mind, I was like in my 30s when I started reading them. So, you know, I think I was 32 when I stumbled upon the creepy pasta wiki. Um, I was stationed in Kuwait. I was still in the military at the time. Um, and we were playing Pokemon on the computers and that's why I was looking up Pokemon. So, oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I thought that was your actual name. Now I didn't think laughing Jack had anything to do with your channel name, but awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, hey man, I, I'm going to be doing original laughing Jack this October. And if snuff bomb can't make it, then maybe you can be the voice of laughing Jack. Uh, if you're up to it. Look at that. Look and, at that. Dude. Just and yes. out jobs around here, man. Yeah. And yes, you know, TV, really Jorg, job, I have man. seen, <laughs> I have seen the Ben John footage. It's amazing. I'm going to do a really good job. Um, what was I thinking? Of? But I'm trying to think if a creepy pasta is ever like, well, no, I'll tell you one dude that did give me uh, the, the G's just a little bit. <laughs> um, there's one out there. Um, and I'm going to be at the same time. I'm gonna butcher the freaking name, but uh, it's like my dead ex girlfriend keeps messaging me on Facebook. Yeah, I never read that one actually. I never Dude, that it. one actually gave me a little case of the freaking hinky doos, man. Like that, <laughs> that was the one that I remember. I was driving home from work, and I either it was either MCP or Creeps that I was listening to, <clears throat> and the damn story was so good that I got home from work, pulled up in my parking spot. And sat in my car for like an extra six minutes or whatever so I could finish listening to it. I was like, I got to see. I got to hear this the rest of the way through. Um, so that that's one that kind of did. And there's another one. Um, it kind of fell apart in, in some parts, but I still liked it all the way around. It was something like my brother died, but he kept talking afterwards or something. Like that. I don't know if you ever read that one or not. Uh, no, no. But... That one was dope as shit, and um, I enjoyed it. It was it had some great descriptive writing in it. So yeah, there's been a couple that have given me the, the you know the uh, butterflies in the stomach there a little bit, but you know, uh, um, Jack, uh, that's great, man. I I'm glad you'll do the, you'll do the voice for free, but that's only if if I can't get it from Snuff Bomb. We made a deal like a year ago that he would appear on the video, but I have, I don't think it's gonna fly at this point in time. But uh, Jack, um, I'd like to keep it just between me and Kay for right now, if that's all right. Like, I don't want to like bring in like guest after guest, like I have in past streams. So, sorry about that, man. That's right. It's all mine, Jack. It's all mine. <laughs> You're trying to move in on my man. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> the Lance Man. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, so what else we got here? Creepy pasta conversation going on. Oh, here. oh, well, um, see, before No One House took the second place spot as my second favorite creepy pasta, uh, a store by Vincent Vinacava actually was my second favorite for the longest time, but No One House took it just because of how amazing it was. But Which that story by Vincent Vinacava was the rum roll, please. Uh, it's a shame he's not even watching it because if he was, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, the pastel man. The okay, pastel yeah, man yeah. was was amazing. Like the concept That's of the creature, what he does. Like I loved how the story flowed. It just went so. It just flowed so naturally. Like the storytelling was amazing. The characters I loved. Even the pastel man was really intriguing. And I even oh. said uh, outright on MCP's video a while back that that there should be a sequel to it or an origin story on the pastel man. 
But then after a year ago, but then after a while, yeah, not a year ago, but I thought to myself, like, a sequel wouldn't be really be necessary because the story just kind of wrapped up at the end of it right there. And an origin story for the Pasto Man would just kind of, like, um, defeat the purpose. Like, it would basically, like, ruin his character in a way, if not done right. Yeah, that would that was a fine story, though, and definitely well deserving of the uh, of your high appraisal. Um, oh, my best friend Mike Rucker just texted me. He's listening, but he doesn't do the YouTube stuff too much. Mm. Um, I want to give him a quick shout out. Well, uh, Mike, your friend here is a very talented writer. It's great to have have him on my show. Uh, Mike Rucker and I have known each other since our freshman year of high school, and um, he is one of my most trusted go to. Um, critiquer. Uh, See you, opinion. Jack. Everything I write, I send him a copy of typically before I post it. And I'm like, Mike, give it a, give, give it the, uh, give it the Mike Rucker approval or don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the dude has never steered me wrong. I have actually, I have actually dropped plot ideas because he was like, dude, I don't, I just don't feel it. And I thought about it and I was like, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if I feel it anymore either. Um, so, um, so yeah, Mike's always been there for me, man. I, I definitely intended to give him a shout out on this. And then I, he just texted me. He's like, Hey, I'm listening to your podcast. Dude, it's fucking awesome. So yeah, I have Mike. I forgot. <laughs> shout out. Uh, Madam McCobb and I talked about Kimberly Kimberly story a few weeks ago. It's not really a traditional creepypasta, but that one freaked me out. Hey, speaking of Madam McCobb, uh, maybe she could be the voice of Jeff's mom. You never know. I mean, I'd like to reach out to her and talk to her about this thing, but I I don't want to rush into anything like maybe she's too busy, but I would like to at least ask her at least at some point. Because I feel she would, she'd be a good voice for the character. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I think, um, I think Madame Macabre will, will do extraordinarily well anything that she sets out to do. So yes. Um, Madame like, Macabre. If I can get her, then that'd be amazing. That would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it, great to have her on board. People that I would, I, I would work with her on just about anything so yeah um I, I would definitely say if you can if if you can get her to do the voice it's going to be fantastic hmm. and speaking of creepy pastas actually um this one i love so much but it's, it's a really long series so i can't really classify it as one pasta but it's like multiple but the, the one i'm talking about is the pen pal series like pen pal like is so realistic and horrifying it's so well written it's so it's great it's i love it and the fact that it's going to be turned into a movie is just incredible in case you didn't know the author of pen pal actually got approached by an oscar winning movie producer to turn it into a movie and apparently the author agreed That's like awesome. i think his name is 1000 vultures yeah if you haven't read pen pal do it it's long but it's so worth it especially near the end of it it's really touching but sad at the same time but it's so worth it And okay, well, on the subject, um, what pastas, uh, what pastas uh, do you have in mind that you like? Well, just putting what this out I here, my acting is better than it was. Okay. Oh, um, I'd like to hear that sometime. Hey, oh, hey, Dark Huntress, maybe you should uh, give narration a try. I mean, yeah. anybody can. Even if you don't do narration on your channel, it's always worth to give it a try at least once. If well, you watch someone who does it, you got to start somewhere too, right? I mean, shit. I mean, um, don't expect to hit home runs when you first start at anything. Yeah, I was really bad at narration when I first started out. Like, I still have my old videos up here, and then, like I said, I'm going to keep them up here, despite how cringy, they, <laughs> despite how cringy they are. But my first two videos, especially the first one, it was really bad. And at that time, I had never, I hadn't experienced editing before. I had no idea what it was like. Well, well, no, no. In seventh grade, I did work with Windows Movie Maker briefly, but no like actual experience like editing my own stuff and it was really bad i mean back then i thought it was really it was like yeah, yeah, been awesome but some of my <laughs> no, it's, it's really it bad was, it was it was narrations that helped me to catch a lot of my rookie errors in my own writing i used to be a dialogue tag freaking i overused the shit out of them and i never realized how bad it sounds or is until i heard people reading the stuff and it's like stop where you are said bob what do you mean said rick i don't know but you should stop where you are bob insisted 
I, I, I can't figure it out, replied Rick. And I'm just like, oh, my God, that's annoying. I'm like, I, so, like, I caught that. That was one of my big problems that was starting out is I just use, I overuse dialogue tags like fucking crazy. So that's one thing that, you know, we all grow. We all grow as artists. We all grow as creators. I tell everybody, when you first start out, man, you're not going to hit home runs. And you might. You might. You might. But that is the exception. That is not the rule. You know, generally, the first thing you write, I've had stuff deleted off of Creepypasta Wiki. That right. Uh, it happens. It happens to everybody. You know, that's why when people are all like, oh, you guys shouldn't delete stories. It's like, look, you're talking to somebody who's had a couple of deleted himself. All right. it, it sucks. Yes. But when I looked back at those stories, I was like, yeah, they probably should have been deleted. And those were ones that I wrote. So I, I can be, you know, self-aware enough to be like, yeah, I can see why they took those off. They weren't that good. But... I mean, this is the thing. I think I tweeted something out about this the other day. Like, if you're a creator, man, just fucking create. Do it, okay? One, you're never going to be able to turn it off. If you're an artist at heart, the desire, the need to create is always going to be there. It's going to haunt you. It's going to pull at you. I wrote until I was about 22, 23. It's stuff that never saw the light of day. Sadly, a lot of it was lost in Hurricane Katrina. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't, didn't write Secret Bar until 2014, but I'm going to tell you, in that 10, 10 or 12-year course, I thought about writing all the time. And finally, I just really wanted to write it, and Creepypasta Wiki was where I chose to, to you know, put my stuff. Um, and thanks to incredible fans and readers and supporters and people like you and everybody in this chat, so I'm still going. You guys motivate me, and I love you all. Same but. with me. Same with me. I'm glad we can motivate you, and I'm glad you guys in the comment section can motivate me too. It's like, yeah, I know I'm a small channel, but I've been told I'm criminally underrated, which is great. And just hearing comments like that just really keep me motivated, and it really keeps me going. It's great. I mean, you guys really push me forward and want me to keep doing this. It's worth it. And granted, I never thought about – oh, no, no. I did think about stopping at least once or twice, but – I didn't. You guys kept me going. It, it really motivated me. I know I'm repeating myself at this point, but it really is inspiring to me. Yeah, I've thought and, about. Look, I've, yeah, it, it's wonderful. I have thought about. You know, am I? I've had those moments of doubt where I'm like, am I really talented, or am I just? Are people just being polite, or maybe the people on me are? Are a thousand people thinking I'm shit and maybe just the five people who think I'm good are they the ones that are putting out the positive? And, and finally, I realized it doesn't fucking matter because as an artist, my need, my desire to create, to write is going to always win in the end. I'm not going to be able to fight it. So I may as well just do it. And I do. And I love it. You know, it is. And like, so like I said, if you're, if you want to be a narrator, be a narrator. If you want to be a writer, be a writer. If you want to be an artist, be an artist, you know, and, and just do it, you know? And, and if, if, if you have five subscribers and nobody ever comments on your shit, just keep going because you're still, you're, you're still satisfying your need to create and to go. And eventually all it takes is one good, like with me, it was getting an MCP reading that put my name out there a lot. Um, I think he read the the uh, frantic foul up of uh, Falcone, which is one of my stories, one of my old creepy pastas, and that got people talking about K. Bannon Kelly. And, and yeah. then then Creeperoni started reading my Tobit series, and God bless her, she read every single damn one of those things. And <laughs> Your stories are pretty long, though. They are. I do write long. I, I struggle to write less than 10,000 word stories. It's actually difficult. Um, yeah, it's not a bad thing, though. Write short. Yeah. So, look, guys, create. If you're an artist, create. Do your thing. Follow follow your, your love of the craft. Um, and you will, you will be, you'll be there. You will be feeding your soul. And you will be happy for it. 
Those are words to live by, man. Words to live by. And don't let oversaturation get to you. I mean, yeah, I'll admit, there's a lot of narration channels out there today. But really, when you think about it, what isn't oversaturated on YouTube nowadays? I mean, yeah, something might start off as pop start off really popular, but as time goes on, more and more people are going to start doing the exact same thing. I mean, look at ASMR channels, for example. I believe General, Whis General Whispering was like the first one, but since then, more and more have popped up as the years have gone by, and it's become oversaturated in and of itself. And don't even get me started on gaming channels. Those are incredibly oversaturated. But what I'm trying to get here is, yeah, a certain subject on YouTube might be uh, overdone by a lot of people, but that shouldn't stop you. I mean, if you feel like you can add something new to it or if you just want to do it for fun, then go for it. Go all the way. Don't let something like that stop you. Exactly. In other words, upload exact. Oh, you all right? Yeah, that was that was my microphone falling. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. In other words, don't be afraid to upload what you think you're good at. Upload what you think. No, upload what you want. Upload what yeah. you think you're good at. Upload, you know what I'm trying to say. Just upload whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Exactly. exactly. There, is no, there is no surplus limit out there. If you want to write Jeff the Killer fanfix, fucking write them. Don't be afraid to put your name out there and don't be afraid to try something new. Yeah, there's no limit. You're not going to clog up the damn pipes, all right? I mean, yeah, Nobody's going to be with, like, with, oh, with me, I'm... I, I do strictly narrations, but I want to branch out and do other things. Like, hell, one day I plan on doing uh, song covers. I want to do karaoke stuff on here, too, because I do sing in real life, too. So yeah, I want to try something out with that. He's <laughs> yeah. very good, folks. He's good at what he does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he heard me sing Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash last night. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I set throat. Yeah, I'm trying to work on a, a bass voice. I mean, I think I did a really good job. <laughs> But I fell into a I, I tweeted something out the other night, though, and it was like, write or, you know, create whatever the fuck you want. Because, you know, there's no, nobody's out there keeping count. Like, all right, there's 999 Jeff stories. Oh, yep, now there's a thousand. That's it. There can be no more. We, we can only hold a thousand, and he just wrote the thousandth one, so that's the end of no. There's write whatever the hell you want. When I was a kid, I wrote freaking... Super Mario Brothers and Mortal Kombat fan fiction on loose leaf paper because it made me feel <laughs> that accomplished when I wrote it, okay? And I'm glad I wrote those. I even wrote a horrible one where Liu Kang had to go into space and fight freaking evil monsters on a fucking <laughs> space station, all right? And he got into space by jumping over a fence at NASA. Flawless victory. Yard, and then punching an astronaut in the face and stealing his suit. And that's how he got into outer space, all right? And you know what? I'm fucking proud of every every damn word that a 12-year-old Caleb wrote about Liu Kang and his adventures in outer space. Uh, <laughs> love what you create, people. Love what you create. Because if you don't love it, you can't expect anybody else to love it. I always tell people, be humble, yes. Don't sit there and say, I'm a great writer. Now, you are a reflection of your audience, okay? Whether you're a great writer or not. But you have to love what you create. One of the worst habits I see, especially from new writers, is they go in there and they're like, hey, guys, I, I wrote this. I know it really sucks. I know it's really horrible. But if you can read it without vomiting, I'd really appreciate it. I'm like, no, do not freaking promote yourself like that. Jesus. I mean, imagine going into a restaurant and having them come and be like, yeah, we got the vomit-inducing special today, guys. The chef really It's like when a smaller narration channel tries to promote themselves on a bigger narration channel. They say, hey, guys, I do narrations on my channel too. too. Check me out. Like, I feel like that's not the right way to promote yourself, especially if you're a narrator. And in that case, as a writer, that's not right. That's not the right way to promote yourself either. It's like, I know it's not that good, guys, but give it a chance. Like, yeah, don't promote no, yourself. That's like not that. how you. That's not how you do it. That's not how you promote yourself. If you can't, if you're not confident enough yet to say this is a really great story, you're gonna love it. If you don't have that level of confidence yet, then just avoid adjectives altogether and just say, "Hey, here's a story I wrote. It's about a guy in the woods worshiping the devil, and he stumbles upon some campers, and uh, it was inspired by when I was a kid, and we went camping, and some creepy dude came out of the woods and talked to us." Hope you guys like it. Like, share, comment, whatever if you do. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to even sit there. You don't have to use the adjectives. Just present it. Well, you're welcome, TV, uh, TB the Wicked Juggalo. Yeah, I'm glad we could inspire you. That is the best thing right there in the world is when you actually inspire somebody else. I love going on to, you know, 
like, you know, different. I love going on DeviantArt, and I told you, it's something I do about once a month. You know, is I'll go like on DeviantArt, and I'll go on Tumblr and, and whatever, and I'll Google Cave Ann and Kellum or High Rock Tobit or Jeff the Killer 2015 or whatever, and I'll comment on the fan art that I find for it. And, and that's exactly what I'll do if I ever get fan art. I do it all the time. Whenever I get fan art, I comment and say it. it's great and I retweet it. It's fantastic. I love it. I share their shit out there. I say, man, I really appreciate you. One, reading my stuff. First of all, thank you for that. And the fact that you actually took the time to adapt it into a piece of art because you liked it so much means the fucking world to me. Thank you so much for that as well. And you know what? I that you, you gotta i always say that be grateful be grateful for the promotion that you get from others because nobody has to give it to you somebody can read your story and just keep it moving they don't have to say great job they don't have to share it they don't have to mention you they can keep it moving and just say well that was a cool story if somebody takes the time to to put you out there a little bit man make sure you take the time to thank them for doing it you know because it as independent artists, we only have each other. We don't have publicists. Yeah. We don't have agents. You know, we have ourselves and we have our community. We're all one right? big happy family. And that's what we have right there. That's the only way people are going to know if K. Ban and Callum write something. Or if Lance's creepy reading narrates something. Exactly. Is if we tweet it, share it, whatever, and somebody is good enough to comment, like it, retweet it. That's the only way it flipping gets out there. Unless you have a million followers and can self-sustain or unless you have a professional agent that can sit there and make you goddamn famous, you got to do it yourself and you got to do it through the community. Network, I always tell people, fucking promote, network, and express gratitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Kay, this has been quite the evening, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. This has been... Wonderful time. I have enjoyed every every second of it, man. And I uh, definitely want to come back on your show again. Absolutely. And hey, maybe we can bring in some guest stars. Maybe hell, maybe MCP could join at some point. <laughs> I, look, I would love to have a, a big sit down, a big collab with a bunch of creators and, and have us just shoot the shit. Oh, yeah, t definitely, man. But we've been, we've been doing this for like three hours now. And it's, man, we just got lost in conversation. Like, it was absolutely fantastic like i loved it it was I, i'm having a great time yeah it's one of those things where it's kind of like i'm looking at the clock and i'm like okay i should wrap this up but then it's like <laughs> somebody will comment in the section or you'll say something or whatever and i'm just completely re-engaged all over again and i'm like god damn it i don't want this in give me one second though <laughs> yeah it's like you want to just keep it going you don't want it to stop and I have a sci-fi novel in the works. Hey, that's pretty interesting, TB Wicked Jungle Juggalo. That's awesome. Uh, hey, uh, I'll check it out when when it's released. Let me know. Hit me up. Yeah, for real, guys. Like I said, uh, one last time since we're wrapping up here, make sure that if you're not already following me and Lance on Twitter, that you do so. I am at Bannon K 1979 on Twitter. Lance can tell you where to find him, even though I'm pretty sure most people in this room probably already follow him. Mm -hmm. uh, but for your listeners who may come back later, Lance, where can we find you? You can find me at Lance Creepy Reading on YouTube. Lance read this on Twitter, and of course, Lance is Lance's Creepy Reading on Facebook. Oh, go. and I don't use the Facebook that often, though. But you can also find me on well, where else? Lance's Creepy Reading on Instagram. Oh, and also, I recently made a Snapchat too. If you guys want to follow me there, Ooh, you, got, you are everywhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't really promote uh, some uh, some of my social medias, like uh, my Snapchat, for example. But in case you guys are interested, uh, my Snapchat name is Lance's no apostrophe, Lance's C reading. And there you go. That's where I am. All right, so you guys, and make sure for those of you who may come on later and listen to this as just a regular YouTube video, vidya, make sure that you. Follow Lance on all those places. And make sure you follow me at Bannon K 1979 on Twitter. Absolutely. And read, and read Caleb's it. work. It's absolutely fantastic. Great work. Yeah. You can find me on the Creepypasta Wiki. Head on over that way. User Bannon K 1979. That is me. I have a big old earned screen name because I'm an admin <laughs> over there. Click on that. 
go to my profile. There's also a link to my directly to my profile on my Twitter, which has all of my stories nicely libraried and cataloged with, with a description and all that nice stuff. So you know what you're getting into before you start getting into it. Well, uh, Caleb, I'll just say this. Thank you so much for appearing on my show, my stream. It's It was great. We had a blast. We had some laughs. We covered a lot of topics. It was yes. well, great. Thank you for having me, man. It has been a, a serious pleasure to be here. Can't wait to do it again. Um, anybody else out there, um, if, if I did not overly nauseate you and you would like to uh, have me on to discuss this, that, and everything in between, hit me up. And I would love to come and hang out with ya. Oh, before we go off, Killahawk just jumped in to say what's up. Killahawk is a great, 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 great guy. Good friend of mine from the Creepy Pasta Wiki. Check him out if you haven't. Oh, uh, man. It's a shame he jumped in so late. Nothing at the tail end you know, of it. I had a feeling something like what happened. Like with most streams I've done, someone always jumps in at the last minute when I'm about to end it. But. Hey, for the time being, like it's great to see you, Killahawk. It's really great to see you. Yeah, this is one of those things that if we don't end it now, it's going to be like sunrise, and we're still going to be talking. So, yeah. <laughs> on that note, my man, you can disconnect when you want, guys. Thank you, everybody, for popping in, chatting with us tonight. I love every one of you. Thank you. For I love you guys too. Thank you so much for everything. It was great. I am nothing without you guys. Love you all. Same here. Anyways, Jeff the Killer, twenty fifteen, will be coming out in December. So hopefully right around then we can get this audio drama done and hopefully you guys can enjoy the hell out of it. Damn straight. <laughs> With that being said, guys, I'm Lance's Creepy Reading. And I am K Ban and Callum. Have a great night and take care. Good night, guys.